Chapter 1526 Getting Super Geno Points Han Yin accepted the challenge and entered the Geno battleground with excitement. There, she saw Hansen standing. Big brother, how is this possible? The real blood Geno core is yours? You have three self Geno cores? Han Yin had always thought Hansen was strong. He was her role model, after all. But even for him, this was shocking. Two Geno cores that managed to leapfrog to first place had been owned by Hansen, and Hansen had a super Geno core on top of all that. He was like a monster, and few people would even be willing to believe such tall tales. If other people find out Crystal Core and Real Blood are owned by the same person, I fear the entire populace of spirits and creatures in the Fourth God Sanctuary would go insane. Han Yin felt proud, knowing this was an accomplishment of her big brother, her idol. I'll give you first place. Then, I'll challenge you again with Crystal Core, Hansen said and then conceded, leaving the Geno Core stored shortly after. Hansen couldn't explain everything in a couple of short sentences, so he couldn't be bothered to say anything else. Hansen re entered the Geno Core storage and challenged Han Yan Shi King Blade. Crystal Core was back on top, and it received its ninth reinforcement. Now the Silver Geno Core leaderboard displayed Crystal Core at the top, then Shi King Blade, Real Blood, and Blood Wave. Blood Wave was out of the top three now. When Little Jade Lion King and Blood Wave entered the Geno Core storage, they saw the rankings and were stunned. They could not believe what their eyes were telling them, and they were wholly frozen in place. How is that possible? No way. Little Jade Lion could not think straight. He did not know how Hansen had actually reached first place while Blood Wave wasn't even in the Geno Core storage. The others in the Geno Core storage saw real blood suddenly jump up into the number one slot, and they all knew what had happened. The top rankings now kicked off a big fuss. Everyone wondered who the masters of real blood, Shaking Blade, and Crystal Core were, and if they were in any way related. There were many wild conjectures, but the thought that Crystal Core and real blood actually had the same master did not even cross their minds. Normal people didn't think it was Hansen because he had already shown off his butterfly Geno Core in the Alliance. Many people had a video of the battle. Because everyone thought Hansen had a Super Geno Core, no one would link him to two minor by comparison Silver Geno Cores. If Hansen didn't say anything, no one would know he had four self Geno Cores. After leaving the Geno Core storage, he started to use his Gold Core lights to level up Real Blood Geno Core to Gold Class. The Gold Class Real Blood Geno Core did not look very different. It still looked like a simple drop of blood, but the interior of the core began to look a little strange. There was a flicker of gold within it, like the sunset. In Hansen's body, his blood pulse sutra leveled up with his real blood Geno core. His body was improving as well. The real blood Geno core, which had just appeared on the silver Geno core leaderboard, now disappeared. It had only been there for an hour. Hansen tried using his real blood Geno core to absorb life Geno essences again. Now that it was gold class, it spread across the items incredibly quickly. Within two days, the life Geno essences would be wholly soaked by real blood. I hope I will be able to absorb it when it is soaked. Hansen wasn't in the mood to do anything else over the course of the next couple of days. He stared at the Shell King's life Geno essence to pass the time. Real blood worked more quickly than Hansen had expected, and after 36 hours, the life Geno essence had been wholly covered by real blood. Hansen felt when the connection was completed, and then it was as if the life Geno essence was an extension of his being. Hansen tried to run his Dong Shin Sutra to absorb the life Geno essence next. He didn't even need to simulate the Shell King's life force. Life Geno essence absorbed. Super Geno points plus one. Hearing this voice, Hansen became incredibly excited. He could finally start collecting Super Geno points once again. Haha, I'm going to max out my Super Geno points again. Hansen looked to the sky as he laughed. He was supremely happy. External power could be handy, but it was the power that resided inside your body that was the most reliable. Hansen was extremely excited about leveling his genes up further. The energy inside the life Geno Essence entered Hansen's body. The cells that had stopped evolving began to improve, and his genes were getting better already. In the end, Shell King's life Geno Essence gave Hansen a total of 9 Super Geno Points. And after Hansen absorbed the Shell King's life Geno Essence, he placed his real blood on the Ruby Cricket's life Geno Essence. Little Jade Lion was very unhappy about all this. 
After Crystal Core reached first place, he ran straight out of the Geno Core storage. He didn't want to go back inside, as he was now afraid Hansen would seek him out. He did not want to accept Hansen as his master, but he wasn't obscene enough to deny such a bargain ever took place. Spirits, creatures, and humans all valued different things. To the White Lion family, loyalty, bravery, and trust were of the greatest importance. That was why Little Lion's mind was in two halves. Little King, the time to go to the ice ruins has practically come. Have you sufficiently prepared? Bloodwave came to ask Little Lion. The ice ruins are opening? Little Jade Lion was shocked. Yes. Lion Boss asked you to get going to the ice ruins tomorrow, Bloodwave said. Little Lion nodded and said, Okay. At least very little will trouble me. Will you come? Bloodwave nodded and said, I can come with you. Toothbeast, as well. He will be in charge of keeping you safe, but that will only apply outside the ruins. Once we're in, grabbing the treasure is down to you and me. Of course. Who else, of this same level, could possibly be stronger than us? Little Jade Lion spoke proudly, but his mind did drift to Han Sr. As this was happening, Hansen was simply waiting for the Ruby Cricket's life Geno essence to get completely soaked. But before it was absorbed, Shadow Shelter's cheap sheep delivered a report. A creature had paid them a visit, asking to see Hans Senator they were told he was a good friend of Hans Sen's. No way. After Hansen heard cheap sheep describe the creature, his mouth opened wide. Chapter 1527 God's Ruin Hansen quickly walked to the shelter's hall. There, he saw a creature floating inside. Little fairy? You're a demigod now? Hansen looked at the small, fairy-like lady with surprise. What? Only you are allowed to be a demigod, and I'm not? Little fairy lifted her lips. It seemed as if she didn't like what he had just said. No, I just didn't expect you to ascend so quickly. Hansen smiled. Hansen had first encountered little fairy in the second god sanctuary, not the third god sanctuary. For a creature, leveling up was a much more arduous process than it was for a human. Hansen was genuinely surprised she had become a demigod already. Pfft. I became a demigod before you did. Little Fairy looked at him with disdain. Hansen then realized why he hadn't seen Little Fairy in the third god sanctuary. It was because she had already become a demigod. How did you find out where I've been staying? Hansen asked Little Fairy. The fourth god sanctuary was massive, after all. That does not matter but I found you because I know something that will interest you. Little Fairy smiled. What good deeds can you do for me? Forgive my dubiousness, Hansen said. Little Fairy was a heartless little creature, and she never even looked back when she ascended to the third god sanctuary. She just followed the other person through. Hansen didn't trust her, and he couldn't imagine her going out of her way to do something nice for him. Little Fairy looked visibly annoyed, and she said, You are a really unappreciative person. I came all this way to take you to God's ruin. I thought you'd benefit from the venture, but never mind then. I'm going now. Little Fairy said she was going, but her wings flapped at a snail's pace. She wasn't leaving anywhere. Drop the act and just tell me what this is all about, Hansen said. Little Fairy hadn't changed a bit, and her personality was the same as always. The only difference was that she was now smarter and stronger. Little Fairy didn't feel awkward, and she explained why she was there. She had been living well for herself. When she ascended to the third god's sanctuary, a powerful spirit had taken her. After a few years, it had helped her open ten gene locks, and when the spirit ascended to the fourth god's sanctuary, it brought her along. Little Fairy was living a nice life. She wasn't doing as well as she had in the third god's sanctuary, but she had managed to reach gemstone class. She was very talented and powerful, and the spirit continued to help her. It was a good thing that Little Fairy had come looking for Hans Senator. She wanted Hans Sen to go to God's Ruin with her. God's Ruin was a sacred place in the fourth God's sanctuary. The item that was said to lie inside possessed a power that distorted dimensions. This was what made it special. The item had other powers as well, and it appeared in a number of different locations. Little Fairy was journeying to a ruin that was covered in ice. The place's power was based on ice, just like Little Fairy herself. So, Little Fairy fancied testing her luck to see if she could get the item. If she didn't get it, there was still plenty of stuff for them to get there. She wasn't lying to Hans Sr. Many would enjoy visiting such a place. Wouldn't it be suicide for us to go with the power we have? Hansen asked quietly. Little Fairy smiled and said, If super-class elites were allowed, 
I wouldn't have come looking for you. It only lets gemstones and those below inside. Well, in that case, I guess there's no harm in trying, Hansen said. Don't hesitate. Let's go. The heirs of many elites will be headed there, those from a variety of super shelters, little fairy said. Hansen wanted to go, but he didn't know if he could still enter the ruin if he had a god geno core. A god geno core was a super geno core. If entry was restricted to gemstone geno cores only, he might not be allowed inside. Hansen, after thinking things over, decided to give it a shot, regardless. A god geno core was different from a self geno core so maybe there was a chance he'd be allowed inside. Even if he couldn't, he might learn something by going along with the venture for the time being. Are there any people from Outer Sky or Sacred going? Hansen asked. Yeah, you meow from Outer Sky is going, and so is Goddess from Sacred, Little Fairy said, after thinking. Okay, I'll follow you. When Hansen heard those two were going, he definitely wanted in. Hansen wasn't on pleasant terms with either of those women, but it would be ridiculous for Hansen to go to their respective shelters to try to kill them. Even if Hansen didn't earn any relics or items, killing them would make this trip worth it. That was especially true for Goddess and her cheap dog. He wanted nothing more than to slice them both up. But Hansen still worried about whether or not he'd be able to go in. If he couldn't, there was nothing he could do. Hansen wasn't afraid of the potential fallout from killing them both, though. Shadow Shelter now had Gu Chi Ching and Red Pony for backup. They were powerful. Gu Chi Ching was a powerful person from Elysium Shelter, and since she feared Red Pony, it couldn't possibly be any weaker. Even if Outer Sky and Sacred came after Shadow Shelter, it was difficult to tell which of the two would win. And Outer Sky knew Gu Chi Ching had taken over Shadow Shelter, too. They hadn't dared to send anyone there, and they didn't know Hansen had returned to control it now. Hansen packed a few things. He wasn't going to bring anyone, but Bauer, Little Silver, and Star Sea Beast caught wind of his venture and wanted to come along. When Little Fairy saw Little Silver and Star Sea Beast, her eyes beamed brightly. She convinced Hansen to bring them along for additional firepower. Cheap Sheep and Green Cow were loyal, and they wanted to go, too. But Little Fairy turned them down in case they died. Little Silver and Star Sea Beast have gemstone geno cores, so we can bring them. They aren't weaker than any super creature's air. If I can go, they shouldn't have to worry about anything. Hansen thought about it and decided to let them come. But Hansen thought that if he was unable to go inside, he wouldn't risk them going inside alone. It'd be too dangerous. Plus, Hansen was still worried about Little Fairy. There was always the possibility that she was trying to trick them. Chapter 1528 Frozen Forest Hansen packed some things and followed Little Fairy to God's Ruin. Bauer, Little Silver, and Star Sea Beast were coming along with them, as well. Star Sea Beast had grown much bigger by now. Its body was big like that of a dinosaur's. But even so, its eyes remained as innocent looking as ever. Every time Hansen saw them, it made him feel as if he was meeting the eyes of a child. Bauer had been staying in Hansen's arms for the trip, not wanting Little Silver to come any closer. But Little Silver just jumped onto Hansen's head instead, looking like a fur cap. It sat there, waving its fluffy tail merrily. That really aggravated Bauer. In the time that Hansen had been in the fourth god sanctuary, he hadn't traveled or explored very far. As a result, Little Fairy had to lead the entire way. Little Fairy knew the way, though, and there were no dangers along their path. It made for a pleasant and relaxing journey. After walking for half a month, the terrain around them became decked in snow. To the north of where they stood, Enormous glaciers reached up into the sky like crystal swords. Little Fairy lowered her voice at that point, and she told Hansen, There is a scary creature guarding the entrance of the god's ruin. We will need its permission if we are to enter. We are weak, and because we don't know its full strength, we won't be able to go through him if he refuses to let us pass. Hansen had expected Little Fairy to not be 100% reliable. He had prepared himself for unannounced challenges, and so he said coolly, Still, you must have a plan? Why else would you come and fetch us? Little Fairy blinked. She flew onto Hansen's shoulders, smiled, and said, You know me well. If we go straight ahead, we won't be able to make it in. What we can do is sneak inside. And how do we sneak inside? Hansen asked. God's ruin is veiled in a special power of sorts, one that cannot be broken by others. The primary entrance is an opening in the valley, where the creature also resides. 
That's the entrance we won't be able to go through. After a pause, Little Fairy said, but aside from that opening in the valley, I know of another way that can be accessed. It is to the northwest of the glaciers. We can get in from there. But, but what? Hansen asked. Hansen could guess the spirits and creatures would still select the ordinary way through the valley, because Little Fairy's proposed route was likely harder. He wasn't expecting anything to be easy. Little Fairy shrugged and said, There are no scary creatures guarding that way, but there are dangerous geno plants called frozen trees. We must go through the frozen forest that is 800 miles long. Only then can we get in. Tell me more about the geno plants, Hansen said. They're super plants attuned to the ice element. And their attunement with ice is very strong. Normal gemstone creatures that step into the forest are instantly frozen, and even super creatures and the heirs of emperors are unable to stay inside for very long. If you are frozen, you cannot even commit suicide. The scariest thing is that this area is also a part of the ruins. And the super class beings aren't able to get in, either. After that, Little Fairy smiled. Don't worry, though. I'm good with ice. With me here, I can assure you safe passage through the forest. If I wasn't sure of this, I wouldn't have asked you to come here. Okay, let's take the path through the frozen forest. Hansen didn't say anything more and just nodded. Little Fairy was surprised that Hansen was so quick to agree. She was touched by this, and she said, If you guys are so willing to trust me, I'll bring you safer than ever. Hansen smiled. He didn't trust Little Fairy, and his faith still solely resided in himself. Even without Little Fairy, Hansen knew he could keep himself and the others protected. The only thing he was still concerned with was whether he could enter at all. If he wasn't allowed to go in, everything would have been for nothing. Little Fairy didn't say anything more, and she just brought Hansen over to the Glacier Mountains and then went northwest. Hansen watched the Glacier Mountains for a while, and he could see the jutting of numerous peaks. He also sensed a certain aura of power shrouding the mountains, too. When they entered the fields of snow, it was snowing 80% of the time there. It was a very cold place to tread. Fairy wanted the others to believe in her, so she controlled the descending snow to divert each snowflake from falling on her companions. She wanted to show she really was good when it came to the ice element. Where is the spirit that brought you to the fourth god sanctuary? Was she unable to come? Hansen asked, out of mild curiosity. If the spirit hadn't leveled up to super, then it should have come as well. If it was super, it could have at least talked to the creature in the valley and allowed her simple access that way. Little Fairy immediately looked glum, and she said, she died. She was killed by a powerful elite. Even though she was very strong, I suppose not even the mightiest of beings can deny a grisly fate, if that is what awaits them. Hansen was surprised. To be able to bring Little Fairy to the fourth god's sanctuary, the spirit must have been immensely strong. The person that was able to kill her must have been incredibly powerful. Who killed her? Hansen asked. Little Fairy shook her head. She gritted her teeth and said, I will kill that asterisk shoal. That's why I need to level up to super and grab the relic inside. If I can't do this, then I will be unable to avenge her death. Hansen did not say anything. Little Fairy's expression was enough to show that her master spirit's death had really done a number on her. She really wanted revenge. But the opponent would be very powerful and Little Fairy's vengeance would be supremely difficult to achieve. She might even end up getting herself killed. After a few more days of traveling through the snow, they arrived at the frozen forest just as Little Fairy had said. There were many frozen, ice-wrought trees in there. They were like the immense crystal sculptures one might read about in fairy tales. The freezing force of that place would have been able to instantly freeze anything in a 10-mile radius. Some parts of the frozen forest extended beyond the glaciers, but many of the trees were also inside the glaciers themselves. That was why Little Fairy said the frozen forest was part of God's ruin. It made sense. Let's go. Little Fairy looked disheartened. Outside her body, a glowing snowflake appeared and expanded to provide cover for them all. Under the protection of that snowflake, they were all warmed. They no longer felt the chill of the outside. Hansen felt relieved as he walked through the frozen forest, as this was proof he really could go into God's ruin. They walked into the frozen forest, and Hansen did not feel cold due to the warming boon imparted by Little Fairy. He did feel a little uncomfortable, though. As soon as he entered the area, he felt as if he was being watched, like a pair of eyes was fixed on him. Chapter 1529 The Seahorse Pulling a Chimenea 
Although they were still under little fairy's protection, as they traveled deeper into the forest, the chill of the cold began to return ever so slightly. Even little fairy was struggling to withstand the pressure of the freezing force. Most of the cold air was held back, but some gusts managed to break through. Fortunately, Hansen's fitness was of high enough to resist it doing any harm. Hansen continued to look around as he went. He had his Dongshin aura firing on all cylinders as he tried to find out what was watching him. The frozen forest was very strange. It was no wonder the area was a part of God's ruin. Despite giving it his all, Hansen's Dongshin aura could only cover a hundred meter radius. He couldn't see anything beyond that. And furthermore, he was unable to see where something might have been watching from. As they traveled deeper into the forest, the sensation of being watched continued to increase. Hansen kept a permanent frown on his face. It wasn't a good thing to know you were being watched in such a perilous place as God's ruin. This area's security is high, but surely nothing can stay here for very long, Hansen was thinking. Soon, Little Fairy quietly shouted, Be careful. Something is up ahead. Hansen, Little Silver, and Star Sea Beast looked over in the direction she was referring to. Something was moving through the frozen forest. The Dongshin aura wasn't very helpful there, so Hansen had to resort to his basic, no frills eyesight. Now, he was seeing things like Little Silver did. Since they were already there, it wasn't as if there was a point in heading back, either. So, Hansen looked at Little Fairy and continued walking. Unsure of what lay ahead, and wishing to find out, they exercised more caution as they moved forward. Not long after, the shadow in the woods became clearer to them. It was a one-meter-tall seahorse. Its body looked to be completely made of ice, and it wriggled as it floated by, as if it was swimming through the air. It was silent in its passing. The ice seahorse saw the group, but it did not appear to be hostile. It just continued floating by, on its way to wherever it was going. Daddy, look. Many seahorses. So beautiful. Bauer was pointing at the other side of the forest with a happy expression. Hansen looked over to where Bauer was pointing, and he noticed there were twenty or thirty seahorses floating around in the same manner. The smallest one was only a meter tall, but there were others amidst them of various sizes. The tallest one they could see was four meters high. As the creatures bobbed forward, they looked almost funny. The seahorses looked very tame, and they all seemed to want to keep to themselves. Hansen was curious about them but his Dongshan aura had been stifled by God's ruin, so he couldn't tell what power resided inside the seahorses. Bao laughed and jumped onto the back of one of the ice seahorses. She held onto its neck like it was an average mare. Hansen was shocked by her actions, and he wished to call her back immediately. They did look tame, yes, but who knew if they would remain so docile after being provoked? Little Fairy made a hushed call. Hansen turned to look at her and he noticed she was staring at something that was behind the ice seahorse. The expression on her face made it look as if she had seen a ghost. Hansen looked over there and was shocked, as well. Behind the ice seahorse was another bunch of seahorses. The heads of these seahorses were bigger, and they were all at least four meters tall. Their bodies looked to have been made of black diamonds, and they looked hardier than steel. They were different from the other ice seahorses that the group had previously observed. Strangely, there was a chain as thick as a human's arm wrapped around the black seahorse's bodies. It looked like a steel chain, and there were many symbols engraved into the metal. There weren't many black seahorses, and Han Sin was able to count eleven of them. They all looked the same. They floated in the air, but they weren't doing so as randomly as the other ice seahorses were. They were all aligned, traveling in perfect tandem with each other. Behind the black seahorses, their chains all seemed to connect to something. It was a big, black chiminia that was eight meters tall. It looked like a tall black furnace. The chute had blue flames coming out of it, which were burning fiercely inside it. But strangely, Hansen couldn't feel any warmth coming from it. And when the chiminia came closer, they actually felt colder. It was as if it was releasing cold instead of heat. The strong, icy force was getting stronger, and even with the shielding provided by Little Fairy, Hansen felt extremely cold. Not even her control of the ice element was able to protect them from that abhorrent force. Everyone was trying their best to resist the cold with the power they had, but it didn't seem to be working very well. Slowly, they were all beginning to freeze. We should run and wait until the Chiminia has passed. We can come back later, Hansen said. Little Fairy agreed, as did the others. They were all of the mind to vacate the area at once. 
but unfortunately, their bodies weren't listening. Their legs were sheathed in a layer of ice. Quickly, that ice was spreading across their bodies. None of them were able to move. They felt as if they were robots, only able to move a tiny amount. Only Bauer, who was sitting upon the back of an ice seahorse, was okay. Everyone was shocked by what was going on, so Hansen summoned his god Gino Core. It spawned ruby wings behind him, and his whole being began to glow red. That power pushed the cold back outside of him and kept the icy force from affecting him. Hansen wanted to bring his companions away, too, in case something even worse was about to happen. But suddenly, they saw the black seahorses stop pulling the chiminia. Then, they all looked at Hans Sr. Hansen's heart jumped, and he said, Oh, no. Has my performance made them hostile to me? It was then that Hansen realized they weren't looking at him. They were looking at Bauer, who was back on his shoulder. Bauer was not affected by the cold at all, and she sat on Hansen's shoulder, dangling her legs. She was checking out the black seahorses and their black chimenea. Chapter 1530 The Elites That Are Fighting When the black seahorses looked at Bauer, they did not do anything. They simply resumed pulling the chimenea and kept on moving. They moved at a faster pace this time, though, and within a few seconds, they had crossed a great distance. When the big chimenea left the area, the freezing force reduced. The accumulated frost began to fade, and the ice that trapped Han Sin's companions began to thaw. That was way too scary. What was that? When Little Fairy had recovered, she spoke with a look of fear. They both had mastery of the cold. Little Fairy had reached gemstone class, so she should have still had some resistance against super class foes. But even with her strength, her body was frozen stiff by that chilling instrument. It's none of our business. Come on, let's keep going. Hansen put away his god Gino core and headed deeper into the frozen forest. Little Fairy looked at Hansen strangely. She had ice powers, yet she could not resist the frosty air. The fact that Hansen could move amidst it without restraint surprised her a lot. Hansen, as they went, still felt as if something or someone was watching him. But when they exited the frozen forest, no trouble occurred. They were able to safely enter God's ruin proper. The ruins were chock full of glaciers. It was as if they had entered an ice world. The surroundings were so clean and so virgin, it almost made them feel uncomfortable. The reflective surface of the snow was so intense that it made the group dizzy, and their eyes struggled to cope with the glare. Although Han Sin and the others had a strong fitness and wouldn't be permanently affected by this, he still pulled out three pairs of sunglasses. One for him, one for Bauer, and one for Little Silver. Starcy Beast's eyes were too big, and try as he might, he hadn't been able to find a pair suitable for that companion. Didn't you say there is a tunnel inside the ruin? Where is it? Hansen asked Little Fairy. The godlight tunnel was formed by the relic they sought, and they would only truly notice the relic's special power once they entered the godlight tunnel. And when their bodies went against that power, their bodies would become stronger. The reinforcement would not appear in your data, but it would help your body, nonetheless. Hansen thought you meow and goddess would make for the godlight tunnel. So, that was his next targeted destination. Even if he was unable to find the pair, Hansen could at least make use of the tunnel for practice. I think it's on the left. Perhaps we'll reach the godlight tunnel in a thousand miles that way, little fairy said, while looking around. What do you mean by perhaps? Hansen frowned. Little fairy opened her arms and said, I've never been here. I've only heard of this place, and if the intel I obtained was correct, it's a thousand miles to the left. Hansen just nodded and did not say anything. Starcy Beast lowered his body and let Hansen, Little Silver, and Bauer mount his back. Then he took them in the direction Little Fairy had told them to go. While Starcy Beast ran, stars appeared all around them like a shining sea. He was very fast. And while Starcy Beast was huge, he wasn't clumsy. He gave the illusion that he was dumb, but his agility was high. Slow down. This is God's ruin and there are sure to be many dangers lurking here. Little Fairy flew up beside Hansen and warned Star Sea Beast. Hansen didn't let Star Sea Beast adhere to the warning, though, and it trotted on at the same speedy pace. He was no longer afraid of the potential dangers of the ruin. More than anything, Hansen wanted to see if traveling quickly would make the feeling of being watched go away, but it turned out not to help. Despite Star Sea Beast's incredible quickness, the constant feeling of being watched remained. Hansen had thought that they might leave the Watcher behind in the frozen forest, but that didn't seem to have happened. 
He was being watched with every step he made inside God's ruin, as well. Does this mean the relic itself has a mind of its own, and it can keep tabs on all occupants of the ruin? Hansen thought this might have been the only possibility. Hansen didn't think the super elites in the fourth god's sanctuary could possess the power the relic seemed to have, should his theory prove true. Hansen's god Gino Core put him in super class, but this did not change things for him in the ruin at all. If the relic is watching us, then there is no need to worry. Many creatures have been to this place before. Sure, a bunch of them may have gotten unlucky, but most were able to make it back out. I don't think the relic's intent is to kill people. Hansen was deep in thought. But still, why is it watching us? Is it simply curious? Or is it looking for a particular type of person? If it wants to find someone in particular, shouldn't it search for a super elite? But if that were so, why doesn't it allow supers to enter God's ruin? Hansen did not understand, so he stopped thinking. He let Star Sea Beast slow down a bit, and the creature continued on its way towards the Godlight Tunnel. Not long after, they heard the sounds of a battle. It sounded fairly vicious. When Hansen heard it, his face changed and he said, Six Paths is here. Who is he up against that's making him fight like that? Hansen was familiar with Six Paths sword skills, and just from hearing the sound of the clanging, he knew who it was. Strangely, Six Paths was exhausting all the energy he had for this fight. Six Paths' Geno Core hadn't yet gotten back to super class, but his body was up there. To be able to fight Six Paths with such vigor, his opponent must have had a super body. I thought those above gemstone level can't get in? Why is there such a strong elite in God's ruin? Is it another elite that destroyed himself to start all over again? Hansen hesitated a little, but he still allowed Star Sea Beast to proceed. He wanted to see who Six Paths was fighting. The fighting was fierce, and the glaciers began to break. They were special glaciers, too, and they'd be difficult even for a gemstone elite to break. Through this metric, you could tell how powerful the fighters must have been. When Hansen neared the side of the battle, he saw two beings engaged in combat. One of them was indeed Six Pads Emperor, who was gemstone class. His sword was more frightening than ever. Six Pads was fighting a human, and when Hansen saw the person, his eyes opened wide in shock. He knew who it was. Chapter 1531 Making something complicated something simple. God's retribution is here? Hansen looked surprised as he watched the human fighting Six Paths. God's retribution wasn't using a weapon, he simply used his body to fight. He didn't seem to be at a disadvantage, either. His body was stronger than Shafai's, who was a fourth rank Shura fighter. And up against six paths, he wasn't breaking a sweat. You crazy man. I have no qualm with you. Why do you insist on fighting me? God's retribution shouted as he fought. You are a good opponent. You should really fight with me. Unleash all your power. Six Paths kept swinging his sword towards God's retribution. God's retribution looked depressed, and he said, Are you insane? There are many more elites. If you want a good fight, go find one of them. I don't have the time for this. God's retribution wished to leave, but Six Paths' skills were too much, and they prohibited him from making an escape. Why would such powerful competitors be in God's ruin? They must both be super classes. But if so, how were they able to enter? Little Fairy was shocked at the display of what she saw. She thought there'd only be gemstone class or second generation creatures that could compete with her. And after she found Hansan, she thought for sure the relic would end up being hers. She didn't expect to find two super elites such as that after entering the ruins. Hansen, on the other hand, was at ease. He knew six paths wouldn't bother him. God's retribution didn't have much of a grudge with him, either. While those two super elites might have been there, there was no great conflict to put them at odds. And he didn't think they had any connection with Outer Sky or Sacred. Their presence wouldn't affect Hansen's personal mission. Hansen made Star Sea Beast Park someplace near, so Hansen could dismount, get comfy, and watch for a while. Hansen had learned a few of Six Paths tricks, but aside from Heart Sword, he hadn't really spent time practicing anything else. Hansen had never seen Six Paths fight with all his strength before, but now that he saw it, he was able to learn a lot. Hansen was surprised by the method of fighting that God's retribution used. Hansen knew he was a current member of Blood Legion, and due to his blood, he was unable to take advantage of the elemental powers of the sanctuary. He had to use raw, physical damage whenever he fought. But God's retribution's combat power surprised Hans Senator. He was almost as good as a super demigod, 
and his body and combat skills were strange. His fists looked simple, and it seemed as if Han Sin was watching something incredibly basic. In fact, most of the skills were something you'd easily find in school. But it was frightening to watch such normal punching skills deflect six path sword skills. It would shock any spectator. After Hansen watched them for a while, his surprise deepened. He noticed that the simple-looking punches were actually very complicated. While they looked simple, the timing and application of the skills were deeper than it first appeared. After watching God's retribution fight for a while, Hansen was able to comprehend what he was doing. That's a strong fist skill. And God's retribution is strong, indeed. This is definitely not something the average human can do. It's no wonder he is a member of Blood Legion. Hansen complimented him, in his heart. Hansen was also very happy. Those punching skills suited him. While the skills were simple, they would still be difficult to learn in the way Hansen would want to. It was tricky to simplify a complicated skill. You had to have a deep understanding of the complete complexities before you could concentrate the skill down to its pure essence. If you started from the simplified version, you wouldn't understand what was really inside what you learned. It was pointless to just learn the shell. You couldn't live life to its fullest without struggle. Learning Ghost Sword had been complicated, but seeing God's Retribution's punching skills, he felt as if he was learning so much more. He wasn't going to copy God's Retribution, he was just finding things that could be changed and adapted into a sword skill. God's Retribution didn't want a fruitless fight with six paths, but six paths was keeping him there, regardless. And although his punches were strong, they weren't enough to suppress six paths. If they had a genuine fight, determining a winner would be difficult. But God's retribution didn't plan on fighting. He just wanted to leave, and that upset Six Paths. Suddenly, Six Paths and God's retribution saw Han Sen and the others, as he wasn't a great distance away. They started to approach Han Sen as they fought. Han Sen knew exactly what God's retribution was thinking, and he told Star Sea Beast to run off and keep away from Six Paths. God's retribution looked depressed as he was hoping Hansen could be drawn into the fight and left to deal with Six Paths, who was crazy. But Hansen knew what his true purpose was, and he wouldn't let God's retribution come close. The pair couldn't move very fast while they were fighting, so they couldn't catch up with Hans Sr. God's retribution clenched his jaw, then shouted at Hansen, saying, Kid, help me get rid of this maniac and I'll tell you where the relic is. Hansen didn't believe him, and he raised his voice to respond, Keep the relic to yourself. I'm not interested. God's retribution was disheartened once more. He rolled his eyes and said, Do you want to know the biggest secrets of Blood Legion? Help me here and I'll tell you. Hansen grinned. I already met the leader of Blood Legion. You have greater secrets than him? God's retribution couldn't fool Hansen, and he was surprised by what he heard. What? You met him? Yeah, and he told me you were a traitor. He told me if I ever find you. I should cut you up into little pieces. That was just Hansen bluffing. Surprisingly, God's retribution believed what he had been told. He sighed and said, I was tricked by Han Jinji, that asterisk shoal. He made me an enemy of the leader. But the leader wasn't right, either. Blood Legion should not have gone down that path. Which path? Hansen asked. God's retribution stopped talking. It looked like he had just thought of something unhappy, and his mood turned foul. He then began fighting six paths like mad. God's retribution was extremely serious now, and their fight became crazier than ever. It was a much better spectacle to watch, and now Hansen could learn even more. Chapter 1532 Traveling Through a Sea of Stars The two continued to fight, as glaciers all around them were destroyed. You guys should take a look at this. Little Fairy suddenly shouted, as Hansen was fixated on watching the fight. Hansen turned around and looked at Little Fairy, then followed her extended arm to see what she was pointing at. There were cracks in the ice, and blood was beginning to seep out of one of them. It started to pool and run towards them. Oh, no. Hansen's face changed. It wasn't actually blood. In fact, it wasn't even liquid. It was a swarm of red bugs, each the size of a sesame seed. There was a countless number of them, all racing out of the ice cracks in a stream. Anything those red bugs ran across was eaten, save for the icy ground itself. Their passing made the mountain of ice look even more dead, and there wasn't much there to begin with. Stop fighting. Look at what's coming. Hansen shouted at God's retribution and six paths. 
When they heard Han Sin's call, Six Paths did not listen. He merely continued his rampage of attacks. God's retribution was able to see the threat, though. His face changed, and he too shouted, Oh, no. They are God's corpse bugs. Run. God's retribution turned around, wishing to flee. But he was immediately blocked by the manic six paths. Are you crazy? If we don't run now, and the bugs reach us, we will all die. God's retribution shouted his case at six paths. You and I have to settle this fight. Not even God himself can stop us from finishing this, six paths said coldly, as his sword continued to swing wildly. SH asterisk T. Meeting this nutcase was so unlucky. God's retribution shouted out loud. Then he turned to shout at Han Sr., find a way to get rid of this madman. If you don't, we won't be able to run away. These bugs claim they ate God's dead body. I can't confirm the validity of the tale, but whatever the case may be, they can assuredly eat us. How can I stop him? Hansen turned around, ready to run. If God's corpse bugs claimed they ate the remains of God, they must have been powerful to some degree. Hansen didn't want to risk finding out whether or not they could eat him. That's why I asked you to think of a way. I want to live. I don't want to die here, alongside this madman. God's retribution shouted. Hansen noticed that the bugs weren't traveling at a very alarming pace. They weren't a direct threat, not yet. God's retribution and six paths were ahead, though. If the bugs attacked, they would go after those two first. Six paths, if you want to fight him, at least make it so that he wants to fight with you. Right now, he obviously doesn't. So, for the time being, perhaps you should let him go? Hansen said, hoping it would help the situation. Then, he hopped onto Star Sea Beast to make his escape. They crossed a distance of 10 miles before looking back, and when Hansen did, he saw six paths and God's retribution following from behind. They were actually running faster than Star Sea Beast, and they shot right past him. Hansen turned his head and his face changed. The Legion of God's corpse bugs looked like a rush of blood, and they were coming extremely quickly. They weren't slow like before. Not long after, the bugs had closed the gap to a mere mile. They were racing for him like a raging river. The bugs, as they skittered across the snow, were silent. They did not make a sound. Hansen was ready to get off Star Sea Beast's back, as it was slower than the bugs. He had to find another way to gain a lead on them. But Star Sea Beast's body suddenly exploded with an array of stars. Stars formed across its skin and encompassed the atmosphere around it. Then, Star Sea Beast's speed increased. It was like traveling through hyperspace, as the world around them became nothing but a blur. Star Sea Beast's body looked like a shadow, and amidst the rain of stars, it was headed right for the side of a glacier. SH asterisk T, little star. Is your head broken? Are you going to commit suicide? Hansen's face changed, and in a blink, Star Sea Beast ran right into the glacier. Hansen was shocked. Star Sea Beast, with the stars all around, had blinked right through it. Amidst the starlight, Star Sea Beast did not slow down. They traveled through the entire glacier, managing to emerge safely on the other side. The bugs came quickly, but they had to skitter around the glacier to resume the chase. This slowed them down by a considerable amount. Star Sea Beast relentlessly went forward, ignoring the presence of any glaciers that might have been in his way. They were able to avoid the bugs and even gain a lead on six paths and God's retribution. A strange look appeared on God's retribution's face when he saw Star Sea Beast. He shamelessly approached Hansen and leaped upon the creature's back. Haha, give me a ride. God's retribution laughed. Six Paths quietly came to take a seat on Star Sea Beast's back, as well. Bro, your pet is pretty good. It can go through physical objects. This ability is pretty gnarly. God's retribution gave a thumbs up, seeing Star Sea Beast proceed through another glacier. It's not a pet. It's a creature from my collection. He raised Star Sea Beast like a human child, but he hadn't been able to teach it a new language with any success. It was smart and docile. It never really seemed to display much aggression. Star Sea Beast traveled for half a day, and when the bugs were gone from sight, Hansen brought the ride to a stop. Little Star, good job. Hansen patted Star Sea Beast's head and complimented him. He didn't know Star Sea Beast had those abilities until now. He thought it was awesome. When Hansen had tried to teach Star Sea Beast language and other skills, Hansen had always assumed it to be an underperforming creature. But this latest act was worthy of compliments which made Star Sea Beast happy. The creature knew it had done well. 
Hansen now realized that trying to teach it language and knowledge was too harsh for the creature. God's retribution and six paths jumped off the back of Star Sea Beast and took a look around. Although they were still someplace amidst the glacier mountains, the ice around them was now sprinkled with colored flowers from every spectrum of the rainbow. Oh, no. Why are we here? God's retribution's face changed after looking around. Chapter 1533 The Chiminia That Went By Is there a problem with this place? Hansen frowned as he looked around. He didn't notice anything out of the ordinary. God's retribution looked serious when he spoke next. He said, It's more than just a problem. It's a big problem. I have been to this area before, and these flowers are frightening things. You do well to avoid touching them. The flowers are strange, that's for sure. They are very vibrant, but they lack a life force. Six paths chimed in as he looked at the colorful flowers all around. What happens if I touch them? Hansen asked. God's retribution laughed and said, I accidentally touched a red one once. I had to cut off my finger to save my life. If you want to give it a try, be my guest. Hansen looked at the man's hands and noticed he had all his fingers intact. Perhaps the missing finger had regrown, but he couldn't know for sure. And that meant he didn't know if God's retribution was lying or not. But to remain on the safe side, Hansen followed the man's advice and avoided interaction with the flowers. It would be best for your pet, little star, to take us away from here. He can avoid touching these flowers, so he won't be affected, God's retribution said. Hansen nodded. That would be the only way. There weren't many flowers, but little star was huge, and he might have touched them if he walked normally. Everyone climbed to top star sea beast again, and Hansen asked God's retribution. So, you have been here before? Which way should we go to leave this place? I have come to this place, but I've never been to this spot precisely. I have no clue, either. God's retribution shrugged. Six Paths remained silent, but he didn't know this place either. Six Paths was a born emperor, and he couldn't have come inside before. This was his first time here, as well. Then we will have to try our luck then, won't we? Hansen randomly selected a direction and allowed Star Seabees to take them forward. Amidst the starlight, Hansen traveled between, across, and beyond the glaciers and flowers. Nothing was able to touch them, so they weren't in any danger. But as they walked, they felt something was wrong. When they went past the next glacier, they saw a whole host more flowers. I think you've selected the wrong direction. There are more flowers here than ever. We're just going deeper into the meadow, God's retribution said. I told you I was guessing. If you don't like this direction, then how about you choose a way? Hansen shrugged. That way, God's retribution pointed out the direction he wished to travel in. Hansen made Star Sea Beast head in that direction, but after some time, Hansen noticed the number of flowers had actually increased. They still seemed to be going deeper. Go back. We can't go any further here. There are too many of the flowers, Little Fairy said. At the same time, Star Sea Beast's starlight began to dim. Its body was going back into a solid state. Hansen checked the creature's body and noticed its life force was much weaker. Traveling that way must have costed a lot of energy, and it wouldn't last much longer. Hansen let Star Sea Beast rest in a place that had no flowers. It'll be difficult for us to return, God's retribution said, while panning the area. Aside from the basketball court-sized patch they were in, the flowers covered every inch of ground that they could see. Unless they could fly through the sky, he did not know how else the flowers could be avoided. Star sea Beast's body was so big that without its special traveling skill, it'd end up touching each and every flower, after all. Hansen considered flying, but he saw some strange clouds in the sky above. It made him have second thoughts about that idea. Little Fairy had already told him he couldn't fly too high while in the ruins, too. He most certainly couldn't go much higher than the glaciers. If he did, the clouds would unleash a strange power. It was a force that had killed many creatures in the past. Hansen thought about what he should do next. But suddenly, they saw a few shadows in the sky. Eleven of the black seahorses were flying by. They were pulling the same black chiminia behind them. Its snout flickered with the presence of blue flames, and it looked as weird as ever. What is this? God's retribution hadn't seen those black seahorses before, so he frowned. Six paths looked at the black seahorses in the sky and then appeared to think of something. Hansen had seen them only once before but he had no clue what they were doing or what they might have been after. They did appear slightly different than they had the last time Hansen encountered them, 
though. That was because there were only black seahorses this time. There were no other ice seahorses around. Perhaps something had occurred, and they remained in the frozen forest. They can fly in the sky? If they can, I can do it, too. Let's try flying away. God's retribution made a decision, seeing the black seahorses flying above. Hansen wasn't that hopeful, though. He shook his head. You can try it, but I'll stay here and wait for Little Star to recover. God's retribution wanted to move, but he too decided to stay. He couldn't truly fly, as his ability was more akin to jumping very high. The eleven black seahorses, pulling the black chimenea, eventually disappeared from sight. Six paths had been frowning at them the entire time, and it seemed as if he knew thing or two about them. Six paths, do you know anything about the black seahorses and their chimenea? Hansen asked. He wasn't blind, so he knew Six Paths knew something. Six Paths maintained his silence for a little while longer, before asking, Have you heard about the big fight of the Fourth God Sanctuary? The fight was huge, and many elites participated. Emperors and berserk super creatures abounded in it. I heard the super elites signed a hundred tribe deal. Was it a result of this fight? Hansen asked. Six Paths nodded. It was, but I wasn't born yet. I don't know the details all too well, but one berserk super creature who took part said they were fighting over a relic. Most of the spirits had never seen or heard about it, but they were dragged into the conflict by family or friends. No one said anything. They merely allowed six paths to continue, as they knew he wouldn't bring up the story for no reason. After a brief pause, six paths said, I knew that berserk super creature. He was one of the creatures that managed to steal the relic itself. It was said to be the Black Chimenea. Everyone was shocked, and they all exclaimed, Surely it cannot be the one we just saw. Chapter 1534, Destiny's Tower Is that the big Chimenea? Little Fairy looked in the direction that the Chimenea had flown. Six paths thought for a moment. I'm not sure. What it looked like was never described, but I'm sure there was never a mention of blue flames or a number of black seahorses dragging it around. So, was it that relic or not? Little Fairy frowned. No matter what it is, it has little to do with us. So many elites have come here to retrieve it, but none ever do. It'll be just as impossible for us to get it, God's retribution said. I suppose. But we should still figure out how to get out of here. Hansen was not very interested in the Chimenea. They hadn't gotten remotely close to the object in the frozen forest, but the frosty air in its proximity had still almost killed them. Hansen thought the black seahorses were scary, and he agreed with what God's retribution had said. Even though so many elites wanted to come and get it, it didn't mean it was something any of them could have. The ice around them possessed so many flowers. They exuded no smell, and there were no bees flying around them. And while they were beautiful to look at, there was an undeniable strangeness to them. The flowers had no life force, and while the sea of flowers was beautiful to look at, staring at them too long was unsettling. Hansen walked closer to them to examine a yellow flower. The stalk was very clear, and there was no denying its authenticity. It had to be a real flower, and it was in no way fake. You guys should take a look at this. God's retribution had seen something, and he pointed towards a mountain. Halfway up an ice mountain, Hansen espied the presence of a building that was half invisible. It was made from white metal, which made it difficult to discern amidst the ice. They had been too focused on the flowers to notice it any sooner. That place looks really strange. It can't be where the relic is, can it? Little Fairy's eyes opened wide. It's possible, God's retribution agreed. You said you knew where the relic was, Hansen said to God's retribution. He had lied about the relic to Hansen once already. God's retribution did not feel embarrassed about this, though. He just smiled and said, The relic? The relic is a mystery. It can be here. It can be there. Hansen wasn't in the mood to debate with the man so he just continued to peer at the white metal building. The ice mountain was not too far from their current location. Hansen could discern the shape of the white metal building, but he was still only able to see one side of it from where he was. Over the building's door was a tablet, and upon the tablet was the word destiny. It was something Hansen thought was very familiar. He had seen another tablet similar to that one, possessing the same word destiny, too. Does this place have something to do with that tablet? Hansen was shocked. Somehow, the tablet had been destroyed by someone or something, and bits of it had been scattered across the different sanctuaries. This was something known only to Hans Sr. The tablet was incredibly hardy, 
and try as he might. Not even Hansen had been able to deal it a speck of damage. For it to have been chopped into many pieces like this was crazy. One piece had even ended up inside the Valley of Time. It was all so very weird. Suddenly, he was seeing another piece of the tablet. And this was attached to a building. It made him think, this place is God's ruin. Does that mean the tablet is related to the sanctuary's God? There are many flowers between us and there, but we should be safe as long as we don't touch them. Let's go take a look at that metal tower, God's retribution suggested. Everyone had a brief discussion about the notion, and they eventually decided on leaving Little Silver behind with Star Sea Beast while the rest went to check it out. Star Sea Beast's body had not yet recovered, so it might be risky for it to go. It couldn't protect itself if danger arose. Furthermore, it was too big. There were so many flowers, and who knew what would happen to the creature if it stepped on one? Hansen left Little Silver behind, because if something bad was to happen to Star Sea Beast, Little Silver could protect him. After their discussion was done, everyone carefully traversed the meadow of flowers, headed in the direction of the White Tower. There were so many flowers, but thankfully, there were a few empty patches. Overall, it wasn't all that dangerous. And without trouble rearing its head, they soon arrived safely before the White Tower. When they got close, they saw the tower was huge. There were only seven floors, but each one of them was at least a hundred meters tall. The door itself was twenty meters high. The tablet over the door, as they had seen, had the word destiny on it. When Hansen looked closer, he could even tell the word had been written in the same handwriting. The tower was octagonal in shape, and each corner possessed a metal bell. They walked around it for a bit, but eventually, God's retribution frowned and said, This tower is strange. Aside from the tablet, there's not a single carving. There aren't even any paintings or beast statues. There's nothing. It doesn't suit the tower at all. It's almost as if this construct was built elsewhere and simply moved all the way out here. Six Paths nodded and said, Yes, this tower wasn't built here. Will the relic be found someplace inside the tower? Little Fairy asked. No one answered her because no one knew anything about the tower. They surely wouldn't know what it contained. Do you want to take a look? God's retribution pushed the door open as he spoke. He was just trying, and he didn't expect the 20-meter-tall door to actually open with such ease. God's retribution was frozen. In disbelief, he muttered, it really opened. Everyone looked through the door frame and noticed that the room inside was empty. Aside from a single statue, there was nothing else there. The statue was weird. It wasn't of a Buddha, fairy, god, or anything. Not even Jesus. The statue had a body but it was missing a head. It was like a headless corpse, just sitting there. Who destroyed it? They did not know. Six paths and God's retribution noticed the absence of danger, and so they decided to walk in. Hansen brought Bower with him, and when they entered the tower, Hansen was quickly given a shock. Through the doorframe, Hansen saw the place was indeed quite empty. But after entering, he saw words scrawled into the walls. The content of the writing made Hansen surprised. Chapter 1535, Eastern King was here. The text Hansen saw across the tower was in a human language, but he was too lazy to think about that. The content spoke about the Blood Pulse Sutra. This surprised him, though. The text didn't concern itself with the main parts of the Blood Pulse Sutra, and neither was there anything applying to Life Door. But when Hansen read it, he noticed it was a secret method that could trigger a hidden power of the blood. It was similar to the Shura triggering their Shura change. Those who hadn't studied the Blood Pulse Sutra would believe the text upon the wall made no sense, but Hansen and God's retribution ended up looking at each other in shock. Does this place have a connection to the Blood Legion creator, the human emperor? Hansen was merely guessing, as he tried to remember each and every word and sear them into his memory. Little Fairy was spinning around in circles on the first floor. The broken statue and the text meant nothing to her, and she was eager to proceed. She went ahead to the second floor. She followed a staircase that led up, and when she reached the top, she was surprised to see that the room was completely empty. There was neither a statue nor text. It was as if a thief had just visited. Why is there nothing? Has someone already been here and taken all the good stuff away? After that, she went ahead to the third floor. Everyone followed after her, and just like the second floor, there was nothing at all there, either. It looks like someone's been here before us. Something ought to have been here but it looks like it's been taken, Six Paths said, as he walked around. 
that means there won't be a relic to find here. If the relic was taken, then that also means the ruin will have lost the power to protect itself, God's retribution said. Little Fairy was disappointed. She thought the relic might have been there. But there was nothing to be found. No relic. Nothing. Well, since we're here, we might as well proceed to the top. Hansen held Bauer and went ahead. Yes. Maybe not everything has been removed. There very well could be something left. Little Fairy maintained a smidgen of optimism. They walked up a few more floors and noticed there was nothing more. The place was cleaner than it would have been if the tower's owner had hired a cleaning company. After the repeated disappointment, Little Fairy had lost all hope of an interesting discovery. But nevertheless, they all went up to reach the seventh floor. When they entered the seventh floor, though, everyone was frozen. It was not a shock of horror, though, it was a shock of joy. The seventh floor wasn't empty. Many things surrounded them. The seventh floor had seven stone pedestals, and each had an item upon it. There was a sword, a shield, a staff, a cauldron, a seed, gloves, and a vase. They all looked very special. At the same time, they also noticed that the pedestals possessed a few words. The writing wasn't original, and it looked as if it had been done at a later time. Eastern King was here. The words were written with perfect symmetry across each pedestal, flawlessly. Even the exclamation mark. Hansen was frozen. Eastern King had been there before them, but the words he wrote sucked. It was like something the average traveler would write when leaving their name someplace. Little Fairy wasn't in the mood to read, though. She flew straight over to the treasure, wishing to claim the items. But swiftly, Hansen grabbed her by her wings and held her back. Little Fairy looked annoyed, and she asked, What are you doing? Hansen let her go and asked, Eastern King might have taken everything on the lower floors. If he did that but left these here, don't you think that'd be a little strange? Little Fairy was feeling a mixture of disappointment and excitement. She had been so hyped, but after hearing what Hansen had to say, she couldn't help but think there had to be a problem, too. She turned to look at the items again, but this time, stayed where she was. The way I see it, there are two possibilities. Firstly, Eastern King might have simply been nice. He took what he wanted but left the rest for others to claim. The chances of that happening are slim, though. The second possibility might be that he couldn't carry anything more with him, God's retribution said. Six Paths looked at one of the stone pedestals and said, There is something wrong with the pedestals. There is something moving upon them. It is weak, but I am sure of it. God's retribution took out a stone from his pocket. Where he got it from, nobody knew. It looked to be an ordinary rock. He threw it at the cauldron. Pang. The rock did not hit the bronze cauldron. As soon as it came near the stone pedestal, the dimensions around it began to twist. The stone fell into a portal of sorts and disappeared. When they looked at the pedestal again, the dimension was fixed. It looked as if nothing strange had transpired, at all. A space vortex shield? Six paths and God's retribution frowned. Hansen's face looked dim. If the master of the tower had used that power on a stone pedestal, he must have been very powerful. The tower's master hadn't just cast a dimension twist, either. He had created a vortex that lasted forever. It was something that far exceeded Han Sin's capabilities with Ghost Slash. Someone that strong exists? I wonder who he is. Might he be a god in the fifth sanctuary? Six Paths looked at the pedestals and spoke to himself. Even Six Paths Emperor believed the master of that place did not belong in the fourth god's sanctuary. For him to think that, it was easy to imagine how powerful that entity must have been. If such a strong power protects them, maybe they are the relics we seek. There are seven of them, too. So, there's at least one for each of us. Little Fairy spoke with a renewed joy. Everyone contemplated her words, wanting one of the items. But they simply didn't know how they might pass the space vortex to grab the gear. Everyone was quiet as they thought. Even Six Paths and God's Retribution were silent. They were looking at the items, thinking about how they might break the barrier. Little Fairy was flying around as this occurred, not daring to get close. She was the weakest of the bunch, so if Six Paths or God's Retribution weren't willing to make a move just yet, she sure wasn't going to. I have a way we can try. After a time of silence elapsed, Six Paths spoke. Chapter 1536, Secret Skill. And what method would that be? Everyone turned to look at Six Paths. Little Fairy was the one who asked, desperate for a solution. Six Paths said quietly, The space vortex shield means there is a dimension beyond it. 
No matter how strong we are, we will be sucked inside. That is, unless we have the necessary power to break through space. If we don't have that power, we can't break through the barrier. After pausing, Six Pads pointed at one of the pedestals and said, These are different. If that king was able to leave text on them, that means they are not protected by the Space Vortex Shield. If we get rid of them, perhaps it will be possible for us to deduce the blind spot of the shielding. Although there may not even be a blind spot, it is still worth a try. This is the only opportunity we might get, God's retribution added. Then what are we waiting for? Let's break those pedestals. Little Fairy had calmed down. She spoke quickly, but she wasn't actually in a great rush, and she didn't move. Six Paths summoned his Six Paths sword and pointed it towards the pedestal which carried the sword. Then he said, if this works, I want this sword. Six Paths then struck the pedestal. A metallic clang rang out. All his strike did was leave a white mark. Six Paths looked stunned, and the others all looked on in surprise. They all knew how strong Six Paths was, and if his damage output could only render a white mark across the surface of the pedestal, it meant they had drastically underestimated the strength of the stone. Six Paths stared down at the pedestal. The power across his body began to surge into a single spot, the tip of his sword. When he had gathered it all, he unleashed another swing. This worked far better. He inflicted a half-decent mark across the pedestal. It was still rather shallow, though, and shallower than the inscriptions left by Eastern King. The rock is hard. God's retribution couldn't help but say. This top surface of the pedestal is one meter in length. If we can't do any better than this, trying something else like drilling might work, but it would take us a long time. Six paths frowned. Then how about we all take shifts, chipping away at one? Hansen said. If we can end up getting the items inside, then it will be worth the time spent trying to extract them. Everyone started to discuss the suggestion. In the end, they settled on working in shifts to drill a hole into the pedestal from below. They really wanted to see if they could grab the items that were upon them. The pedestals were hardy, but definitely diggable. They dug into them nice and slow, and after a few days, they managed to dig a hole far enough to allow them to reach the treasure. Novelful. But to their mild disappointment, the relics were still on the surface. The shielding vortex was wide, and it still prohibited them from reaching in and grabbing what they had worked for. It is no wonder Eastern King didn't bother taking these items. Unless he was able to break through space, he wouldn't have been able to grab them. God's retribution sounded extremely disappointed. Hansen knew it would be difficult to break space. He'd only be able to do it if he was like Dong Shin Zi, who really could break through space and punch a hole into an entirely different world. If they could do that, they could grab the items. The treasure was in front of them, teasingly. And yet, none of them had the required strength to nab it. The treasure might not have been obtainable, but at least Hansen had earned something out of the affair. He recalled the Blood Pulse Sutra's secret technique, and after giving it a go, he realized he could practice with it. Hansen returned to Star Sea Beast and Little Silver each and every day to check on the pair and see if they were fine. God's retribution took the opportunity to leave the White Tower with him, as well. Bro, did you practice the secret scrawled upon the wall? God's retribution asked Hansen in a hushed voice when nobody was around. Not yet. Why? What's wrong? Hansen knew the man wouldn't randomly ask him about this. Something had to be up. God's retribution went on to say, You can tell that the secret skill written on the wall is related to our Blood Pulse Sutra. I think this white tower is connected to Blood Legion. This skill might be the key to grabbing the loot. But when I practice it, I have no synergy or reaction with it. Maybe I'm doing it incorrectly, I don't know. But I just figured I should ask you. When Hansen heard what he said, he thought to himself, how is this happening? Can God's retribution really not practice this? This is a skill that is connected to the Blood Pulse Sutra. Blood Legion members must be able to learn it. And if you really can't, then how am I able to? The only possibility that I can think of is that maybe God's retribution did not practice Life Door. He didn't activate the breakthrough and learn it in its complete form. That option seemed to make the most sense. You are a member of Blood Legion. So if you can't learn it, I definitely cannot. Hansen shook his head. God's retribution thought that was likely, too. But he still said, you should still try practicing it. Anyway, perhaps there's something wrong with me or something. Hansen pretended to agree, and in two days, he was going to tell God's retribution that he had achieved no reaction with what was written on the walls. 
If the skill was the key for obtaining the items, there was definitely no chance Han Sin was going to admit he had learned it. If someone from Blood Legion found out that an outsider was able to learn their secret skills, but an actual member could not, it would direct a lot of ire and jealousy his way. Plus, it really could have been the key to obtaining the items. Hansen did not want to leave his fate up to God's retribution's kindness. So, he couldn't admit to the man that he had success with the secret skill. Of course, God's retribution might have been just acting, too. Perhaps he was able to practice it, and he was just pretending so he could snag all the treasure for himself. Hansen went to the place where Little Silver and Star Sea Beast were. Star sea Beast was lying down, simply staring at the tower. Seeing Hansen come near, it stood up happily and ran over to him. Its big tongue licked him across the face. How many times have I told you? You can't greet people with your tongue. Hansen had taught Star Sea Beast the many manners of humans, but the creature was still unable to deny its nature. Star Sea Beast had recovered now, and although Hansen had learned the basic nature of the skill, it was not something he could fully accomplish in two days. So, he planned to leave the place and return when he had mastered the technique. Chapter 1537 Godlight Tunnel Because they were unable to nab the treasure inside, Six Paths and God's Retribution also planned on leaving. Little Fairy did, too, despite her reluctance to abandon the treasure. Just in case they got lost again, Hansen allowed Star Sea Beast to guide them back to where they had been before they encountered the flowers. Star Sea Beast went back through the Glacier Mountains, returning to where they came from, back when they first saw the God's Corpse Bucks. Fortunately, there were no more of the creatures to be seen. Perhaps they returned to the ice. It's safe now. I should go. Whoever gets the treasure, it'll be done so through their own work. God's retribution quickly took his leave. Hansen thought it was suspicious he left. It made him wonder whether or not the man could practice the secret skill. But that had to be impossible. Even if he was able to practice it, without Star Sea Beast's powers, it would be very difficult to return to the tower. After all, Star Sea Beast went there in a straight line. God's retribution would have to traverse many mountains if he did not have a creature like that. Walking back to the tower would take a very long time, provided he could even relocate it once again. Six Paths also bid his departure. They usually preferred working alone, and they were never very fond of sharing treasure with others. Hansen decided to let Star Sea Beast rest for a while so it could recover its energy. Then, they resumed their journey to the Godlight Tunnel. There were many strange places in God's Ruin, but very few creatures. Aside from the God's corpse bugs and the ice seahorses, they hadn't seen anything else. There's a rocky mountain up ahead. This has to be right. This is where the tunnel is. Little Fairy, who was up front, began to shout excitedly. Hansen was sitting on Little Star's back. He looked forward and saw a few gray mountains resting between two glaciers. It looked to be where the tunnel was said to reside. Star Sea Beast moved his legs quickly in a frantic rush to get there. But before they could reach that rocky mountain, they encountered many creatures. Hansen looked at them all closely, and that was when he froze. He had managed to catch sight of the angelic-looking woman and the cheap dog that was her pet. As he continued to look around, Hansen also caught sight of Yu Miao and Yu Xin. It looked as if they had brought companions along with them to keep them protected in their journey to God's ruin. Much to his surprise, Hansen saw another familiar face aside from Yu Miao and Goddess. It was Little Jade Lion King, the creature he had met in the Geno Core storage on more than one occasion. They weren't very strong, but the biggest problem was the sheer number of gemstone-class creatures they had brought with them. They were all as strong as Goddess and Yu Miao herself. The reactions and facial expressions of each of them were different when they saw Han Sr. Yu Miao and Goddess frowned, not expecting to see him there. Little Jade Lion King didn't think much of him, as he had yet to realize that Han Sin was the owner of Crystal Core. What are you doing here? Yu Xin asked Han Sr. He thought Han Sin's soul was damaged beyond repair, so he didn't take the human seriously. I'm here for the Godlight Tunnel. I don't see another reason why I'd have come. Hansen squinted his eyes, examining each of the creatures around him. They had a few dozen spirits and creatures following them. Hansen calculated whether or not he could destroy them all and kill his favorite targets. Goddess, the dog, Yu Miao, and Yu Xin. Goddess and her dog were his primary targets. They were both creatures, too. If they died, they died. If Hansen killed Yu Miao and Yu Xin, they'd respawn. But murdering them would still feel good. 
even if it wasn't permanent. Hansen looked at the creatures behind Goddess, and that was when he saw a familiar human face. It gave him a shock. Why is she here? Hansen saw Queen Huang Fujing. When he returned to the Alliance, he had learned Queen was a demigod. But she herself never returned to the Alliance, so he wondered what might have happened to her. He would never have guessed that Queen had ended up in sacred shelter with Goddess and was now accompanying her to God's ruin. Queen recognized Hansen, but she didn't show any expression of it. Perhaps she didn't want to cause any trouble by showing it. Hansen didn't know if Queen was trapped by a contract or not, so he didn't show he recognized her, either. He didn't want them to hold her hostage and use her to threaten him. Even more surprising, when he looked even further into the lot there, he saw someone else he recognized. It was Tang Jinliu. He was standing behind a spirit that was behind Yu Miao. They were both the same. They held their acknowledgments to avoid causing a scene, but they were definitely worried. Yu Miao, having just been insulted by Hansen, looked grim. He responded unpleasantly, Do you think the Godlight Tunnel is a place just anyone can enter, if they so please? Outer Sky owns it now. Give me a gemstone Geno core, if you want to enter. Before Hansen replied, Little Jade Lion said, what do you mean the tunnel is owned by Outer Sky? This is ours. It belongs to Lion Mountain. What are you both talking about? Sacred is the true master of the Godlight Tunnel. Gods are sacred, and so are we. The cheap dog next to Goddess muttered. Now Hansen knew why they were all stuck on the outside, with none having entered. That was because each of the three factions wanted to assert ownership and start a toll booth. Around the mountain, there were a number of other creatures and spirits watching. They didn't belong to any renowned faction, just like Han Senator most seemed to have come in a party of three or so. You guys are so selfish. You want to claim the Godlight Tunnel for yourselves? Aren't you afraid of offending the countless spirits and creatures that simply want access? A lone spirit spoke in an annoyed tone, having been prohibited entry. If you don't agree with me, then perhaps you'd like to taste my lion heart stamp? If you can withstand a stamping, I'll let you in. Little Jade Lion was not afraid and he went ahead to summon his Lionheart stamp Geno Core. Hansen, when seeing the Geno Core, frowned. It was not his self Geno Core. It was very powerful, and it was definitely super class. Now, Hansen knew that anyone could bring a super Geno Core in, as long as it wasn't their self Geno Core. You wouldn't be allowed in if your self Geno Core was super. It seemed that the Lion wasn't the only one playing by these rules, either. Goddess and Yu Miao must have brought supers of their own. 2. Chapter 1538 Super Geno Core Battle The spirit, seeing the lion stamp, looked frightened. He didn't say anything more and simply turned around to take his leave. The other spirits and creatures remained where they were, but they didn't say anything. They still wanted to get into the Godlight Tunnel, but they were curious as to how things might develop first. After thinking for a minute, Hansen decided to leave too. He wanted to see how things went as well waiting until the three factions had fought amongst themselves and then picking off the survivors would be better than going up against all of them at once. Yu Xin, seeing Hansen leave, grunted and said nothing more. Tang Liu was currently quite depressed. He had been having quite the streak of bad luck. When he entered the fourth god sanctuary, although he managed to survive, he was captured by spirits from outer sky shelter and forced to sign a contract. He couldn't return to the alliance and he had to risk his life frequently, despite only possessing a bronze Geno core. And since the spirit he had signed a contract with decided to join the mission to God's ruin, he had to tag along, too. He was very happy to see Han Sen was actually still alive, but after being captured by a big faction like Outer Sky, he didn't think Han Sen could save him. It's so sad. I couldn't catch up to Han Sen, despite having a 10-year head start, and what's more, I haven't even been able to determine my own fate. Tang Liu sighed. Queen and Tang Liu were in the same situation as each other, but Queen wasn't too concerned. She stood behind Goddess, waiting for her moment to come. She was very confident in Hansen, and she earnestly believed he would save her and get her free. Hansen then watched the three factions get into a fight outside the tunnel, and he made sure to watch from a distance. He was thinking about how he could save both of his human friends, more than anything. If they haven't signed contracts, this will be easy. If they have, it'll be annoying, Hansen thought to himself. Don't waste time. The ruin is only open for a limited amount of time. Lion Mountain will control this tunnel, so just go elsewhere. 
Little Jade Lion spoke with a cocky confidence. Novelful. Although he only had a silver self Geno core, because of White Lion King, he wasn't afraid of Outer Sky or Sacred. Little Lion King, Outer Sky will leave, but only on one condition, you meow suddenly said to the lion. Little Jade Lion replied, if it's on a ridiculous condition, then no thank you. But go ahead and feel free to let me know. It's not ridiculous. If Outer Sky does not fight for your tunnel, you must let us enter the tunnel freely, without taking our Geno course, you meow said. Sister, how could you? Yu Xian sounded nervous. Ownership of the Godlight Tunnel might have been the biggest potential gain of the entire God's Ruin. Yu Miao, by proposing such a deal, would let them lose a lot. Yu Miao waved her hand to stop him from talking, and she did not mention any further conditions. Okay, I promise you Outer Sky Spirits can enter the tunnel. Little Lion King, hearing Yu Miao say this, immediately agreed. Okay, then. Yu Miao waved her hand and brought the Outer Sky followers along with her into the tunnel's entrance. Sister, if you leave like that, we cannot get anything. Yu Xian said to Yu Miao, What's the rush? Goddess is still there. They won't back off, and there'll be a big fight. Determining the victor won't be easy, Yu Miao said calmly. What if Goddess doesn't fight? Yu Xian asked with worry. Impossible. With Goddess' personality being what it is, she won't back off. Yu Miao spoke with unwavering confidence. The black dog, seeing Outer Sky leave, lowered his voice and said to Goddess, Miss, that Yu Miao is so evil. She must be waiting until we fight Lion King and we're injured. What should we do? Should we go back in case they take advantage of us? That won't be necessary. Yu Miao thinks she has tricked us, but in fact, she has provided us with an opportunity. If we beat Lion King, we can claim the entrance to Godlight Tunnel. Goddess stared at Lion King as she spoke. The little lion is young, but the lion heart stamp is a powerful super geno core. With those spirits guarding him, he will be as strong as us. I don't think things will be as easy as you seem to believe. The black dog looked worried. If things were easy, Yu Miao wouldn't have given us this chance, Goddess said, and then walked close to the Lion King. Goddess, my father and your father are friends. You can leave now, and if you do, I won't fight you. Little Lion King continued to speak with pride. Goddess smiled. Sacred's relationship with Lion Mountain has been good, but you are too naive if you think we are actually going to give up. Lion Mountain has its own strength. Its relationships aren't necessary. Are you saying you'll fight me for the Godlight Tunnel? Little Jade Lion seemed upset. We have to fight, but there's no need to harm our relationship and allow others to gain an advantage, Goddess said while looking at Yumiao, who was in the midst of leaving. Little Jade Lion was boisterous, but he wasn't stupid. He knew Yu Miao was simply hoping to take advantage. Then what do you suggest? Little Jade Lion asked Goddess. How about we fight? If you lose, you leave. We can avoid loss, and we can avoid being taken advantage of, Goddess said. Do you think I'm stupid? You are gemstone, and I am only silver. Why would I even think about fighting you? Little Lion King smirked. He was not interested in her proposed deal. Goddess then said, we only battle with non-self Geno course. We won't be relegated to fighting with our actual power. You did bring Lionheart Stamp with you? Yes? We have the God Ring. Do you think Lionheart Stamp can resist the God Ring? Really? Only fighting with Geno course? Little Jade Lion looked confused, unsure of what she was thinking. Little Lion's Lionheart Stamp and Goddess God Ring were not their self Geno course. The combatant's personal power would not affect the fight. There had once been an event between the two shelters, and it proved that God Ring was actually weaker than Lionheart Stamp, but now she was willingly going to use something that was weaker. Little Lion King wasn't sure what she was up to, but he was confident in his stamp. He didn't see a reason why he should reject the fight, and if he didn't accept, he'd simply look weak. People might think he was afraid. Okay, then. Lionheart Stamp versus God's Ring. Whoever loses will leave Godlight Tunnel alone. Little Jade Lion wasn't dumb. He said this out loud, so all could hear which Geno cores were to be used. He didn't want her summoning another. Chapter 1539 God Ring Goddess smiled and summoned God Ring. It seemed as if she wasn't playing around. Little Jade Lion saw that Goddess really was going to use God Ring to fight the Lionheart Stamp, and when he did, he felt far more secure. Sister, what is Goddess doing? God Ring used to lose against Lionheart Stamp. Does that mean she is going to lose again? If that's the case, 
then the lion really is going to claim the tunnel, Yu Xian said. Yu Miao frowned and said, Goddess must have a trick up her sleeve. That naive little lion is going to lose. As they both spoke, God Ring and Lionheart Stamp engaged in battle. Lionheart had been left behind by a super lion on Lion Mountain. It was one of the famous super geno cores of the place. One side of its shape possessed a gold lion head, which had a number of strange symbols upon it. In the language of lions, they merged together to form the word heart. Lionheart Stamp was incredibly powerful, and its stamping ability was capable of suppressing everything. A weak super creature would easily find itself crushed beneath the weight of Lionheart's demigod body. It was quite a frightening item. God Ring had been left behind by one of Goddess Elders. It was shaped like a halo, and it even possessed a holy-like light. Creatures that came into contact with it would have their life force absorbed. It was a very powerful super geno core. The Lionheart stamp was shining gold towards God Ring, while God Ring shone a holy-like light back at Lionheart stamp. Lionheart Stamp's gold light soon started to suppress the God Ring's light, making it clear that it wouldn't take long for Goddess to lose. Hansen found it interesting to observe. He was a good distance away from the Super Geno course, but he could still feel the earthy rumble of the combat. Due to the amount of power colliding, it put stress on the glaciers and began to break them. Everything within a few clicks was utterly destroyed. Novelful. This was taking place inside God Ruin, thankfully. If this was happening outside, entire mountains would have been sundered. There's such strength in these cores, but strangely, they're no better than my god Geno core. I don't know if they have any others that are better, but if they don't, I can definitely strike. Han Sin's eyes shone while he thought. Seeing Lionheart Stamp's gold light crush and diminish the light exuded by God Ring, it was evident its enemy wasn't going to last very long. Lionheart Stamp's gold stamp was preparing to deal a final blow and crush the ring for good. If it was stamped, it had no hope of withstanding the force, and it would shatter. Little Jade Lion was feeling very cocky now, but when Lionheart Stamp decided to drop down on God Ring, he suddenly saw the holy light increase in volume. It shone brightly to absorb its bully, and in a flash, Lionheart Stamp disappeared into the blinding light. When the light dimmed again, the white halo ring had grown smaller to tighten itself around Lionheart Stamp like a constrictive band. Lionheart Stamp's gold light had also been extinguished in the grip of the ring. Goddess held out her hand, and shortly after, God Ring landed in her palm with the shrunken Lionheart Stamp inside it. How was that possible? Little Jade Lion's face changed, and his eyes almost fell out of their sockets. He could not believe Lionheart Stamp had been taken away from him by God Ring. Lionheart Stamp had gone up against God Ring a few times in the past, and not once had God Ring won before. It had constantly ranked below Lionheart Stamp, as well. But suddenly, it had been given the necessary power to constrict and lock up Lionheart Stamp. It was an act little Jade Lion struggled to believe he was seeing. How is that possible? Surely that cannot be God Ring. How can God Ring possess enough power to snare Lionheart Stamp? Yu Xin was shocked, too. He couldn't believe Goddess was holding the ring with Lionheart Stamp trapped inside. That is God Ring. Yes but it is the complete version. Yu Miao spoke with a serious tone. A complete version? Did it used to be damaged? Yu Xian looked at Yu Miao. He knew about God Ring, but he had never heard that it was damaged. But Yu Miao shook her head and said, it wasn't damaged, but the ring has a very special history. Yu Miao paused for a minute and then spoke again. Goddess and her people are creatures, but they claim to be the heirs of a god. Whether that is true, I do not know but their race does have many berserk super creatures. The most famous was undoubtedly God Lord of Sacred. Around the same time God Lord was among us, there was another powerful being in existence. It was a berserk super creature, and it was almost as famous as God Lord. Unfortunately, it lost in a pivotal battle and failed to become Sacred's leader. Was he the one that had God ring? Yu Xian looked shocked. Yu Miao nodded. The power of the Protoss was special and that was because half of their blood did not belong to them. Perhaps it came from their mother, but their powers were not purely Protoss. The Berserk Super Geno course, even if used by the Protoss, could not exert their full power. The powers displayed were no different than an average Super Geno core. And as time has gone on, few people remember that this is one such Geno core. They have forgotten it is an actual Berserk Super Geno core. You mean to say Goddess is able to use all its strength? Is she a pure Protoss? 
If others of her kind were unable to make use of its full power, how can she? Yu Xian was now looking goddess with a disbelieving look. Yu Miao shook her head. I don't know, but that matters little right now. The important thing to know right now is that this puts us in a bad situation. I seriously hope the lion isn't as stubborn as his old man. Otherwise, there'll be no chance for us to take Godlight Tunnel. Goddess took her ring and returned Lionheart stamp to the lion. Then, she said, Little Lion King, will you keep your promise? Little Jade Lion King took the stamp. His face had turned green, and he couldn't bring himself to say anything about breaking the deal. Little Lion King is no stranger to defeat. We can guard Godlight Tunnel together and reap the benefits ourselves, Yu Miao shouted out from across the way. If I lose, I lose. This Godlight Tunnel has nothing to do with Lion Mountain anymore. Little Jade Lion gritted his teeth, then signaled those from Lion Mountain to vacate the area around the tunnel. Wait. Before Little Lion King could leave, someone was heard shouting from beyond the valley. Everyone looked over and saw the person shouting at Little Lion King was none other than Han Senator. They were shocked, and they did not know what he wanted. Chapter 1540 Slaying the Black Back Dog Hansen was approaching Little Lion King, prompting Yu Miao and Goddess to look at him. They were unsure of what he wanted. Although Little Jade Lion was still young, Goddess and Yu Miao did not dare harm him. Goddess had taken his Lionheart stamp. Yes, but she made sure to give it back to him. They were all scared of incurring the wrath of White Lion King. When Little Jade Lion's company saw Hansen draw near, they looked to be quite alert. They all stared down at Hansen angrily as if they were ready to rip him to shreds. What are you doing? Little Jade Lion wasn't in a good mood. He asked Hansen the question coldly, and if the answer displeased him, he was ready to lunge at the human and rip him apart. It'd at least be an outlet for the anger he felt, after having lost the battle he just had. Don't you remember our deal? Hansen said. He wanted to see if the Little Lion King would keep the promise he had made. If he did, he'd help the Little Lion King retake the Godlight Tunnel. If he did that, at least the creature would benefit in some way. Hansen did not have many people working for him, and if he took the Godlight Tunnel, he wouldn't have the numbers to safeguard it. If Hansen could get Lion King's party on his side, it would be ideal. If Little Lion did not keep the promise, though, it wasn't as if Hansen would lose much. He saw the fight against Goddess, and if he had to fight the lion, he wasn't afraid of the prospect. Novelful, it's you. Upon hearing Hansen say this, Little Jade Lion King's face became distorted by shock. He hadn't expected Crystal Core's master to be human, and he hadn't expected to see him there. He had no clue how to respond. Yu Miao and Goddess saw Little Lion King's expression, and it made them frown. They didn't know anything about the deal between Hansen and the Little Lion, or why it was important enough to make him react the way he was. Hansen stepped closer to Little Lion King and the creatures behind began roaring at him. They were ready to rip him limb from limb. Stop. Little Jade Lion King's face looked weird, but he still brought his creatures to heal. Hansen walked in front of Little Jade Lion King and leaned near his ear to whisper, You help me out in God's ruin, and after that, you're off the hook. I won't own you. Little Jade Lion King's mood was renewed with happiness. Just moments before, his heart had been knotted with contradictions. He didn't want to betray his dignity and obey a human as his master, but a deal was a deal. It wasn't as if he could have said no. Now Hansen had just told him he'd only want help in God's ruin, little Jade Lion was beaming with happiness. He said out loud, no problem. If there's anything you need, just tell me. With me here, I'll give you my aid for everything. Yu Miao and Goddess frowned, not having the faintest idea what Hansen had said to the lion to make him behave in such a way. Hansen smiled. I won't need much, but I will be taking Godlight Tunnel. And when it's taken, you and your people can protect it. From there, any findings we make can be shared half and half, as well. Okay, Little Lion King agreed. Although he felt that he wouldn't be of much help in claiming the tunnel, he'd still prefer this to being enslaved. So, he wasn't going to hesitate in his contribution. Little Lion King, are you going to go back on your word and disobey a promise? Blackback Dog addressed Little Lion King with fury. Little Lion King looked shocked, and he said, I didn't break a promise. It won't be me fighting you. It's this guy that'll be doing that. It's his idea, and there's nothing I can do about that. Yu Miao and Goddess heard what Little Lion King had to say, and they immediately looked confused. He used to do things as he pleased, 
but now Little Lion King seemed afraid of a human. They weren't quite sure what was happening. Hansen ignored the others and walked towards the entrance. Without delay, he was going to take the entry point of Godlight Tunnel. This movement shocked even Little Lion King. Although he was cocky, he wouldn't ignore Goddess, surely. Clenching his jaw, he brought his troops forward to follow Hans Sr. Little Lion King hadn't expected Hansen to want to start a fight, but Hansen really wanted to kill Goddess and her dog. This would be the perfect opportunity for that. When they stole the Star Sea Orb, Hansen was in his Super King Spirit mode. They didn't know it was Hansen they had almost killed, but Hansen remembered their cruelty without forgetting a single detail. F asterisk CK. You're just a human, and yet you're being so arrogant. Do you really want to die? Blackback Dog shouted angrily. The creatures of Sacred then ran forward to block the advance of Hansen, Little Jade Lion King, and his entourage. Whoever gets in my way will die. Hansen had a thirst for blood, so he didn't talk or negotiate any more than that. He shone with a red light, and then, the ruby wings spawned behind him. The red light was like blood, and when Hansen pulled out his Taya sword, he swung with wretched strength right across Blackback Dog with a flap of his wings. Blackback Dog only had a gemstone Geno core, and he hadn't expected a human would lash out at him so boldly. He hadn't prepared himself, so it was too late for him to dodge. He spat out some black light and tried to block Hans Sr. But the red light cut through the black light in his mouth, and the moment Hansen flashed past the blackback dog, he whispered into his ears, Remember the star sea orb? Blackback dog's pupils went small. He looked at Hansen, trying to figure out what he might have wanted, but Taya had already lopped his head clean off. The dog's head, with an expression of fear and confusion, rolled through the air. Everyone was frozen. It had happened too quickly for anyone to react. No one had expected a human to kill a creature from sacred like that. Goddess eyes opened wide, and she too was frozen still. She couldn't believe Hansen had killed her dear blackback dog. Little Jade Lion King was frozen, too. He had not expected Hansen to immediately start killing and start with blackback dog, no less. Blackback dog's history was something special. It was a super creature's heir that had grown up by Goddess' side. It was a famous and renowned character of Sacred Shelter. The scary thing was, it had been one-hit killed in a grisly fashion. It hadn't even been given the opportunity to fight back. The dog might have been reckless, but the human that killed him obviously had to be someone special, too. Hanston was in the air, still glowing red with his wings flapping. Everyone looked at him with complicated expressions. You were dead. Goddess' eyes were filled with a murderous rage. Blackback Dog might have been a subordinate of hers, but he had become more than that over the years. They had grown up together. Blackback Dog getting killed made her very angry. She couldn't hide the fact that she wanted to kill Hansen now. Chapter 1541 Strong Killing Goddess' mind was still clear, despite her anger. She could feel that Hansen's butterfly wings were emitting a horrible aura. It wasn't anything normal, and she could already guess it was most likely a super geno core he was using. Goddess did not know where Hansen's Super Geno Core had come from, but she wasn't going to be careless. She pulled out her God Ring again and tried to capture Hansen and bind him. Young Super Creature Blackback Dog killed. No beast soul gained. Geno Core unobtained. The flesh is edible. Collect the life Geno Essence to gain 0 to 10 Super Geno points. The announcement played in Hansen's head, but he did not have the time to listen. The God Ring was coming for him. Little Jade Lion King's mood was a little conflicted at the moment. Although Lion Mountain was strong, Sacred wasn't weak. He didn't really want to fight Goddess. After all, it was why he had chosen to stall her earlier. Now Goddess was mad, and many creatures lunged forward to engage with Hansen at once. Little Jade Lion was of a split mind in what to do. Ultimately, Little Jade Lion gritted his teeth and yelled to Goddess, Goddess, stop this. Otherwise, I'll have to be cruel. Goddess harshly responded, This human is dead. It's none of your business, but if you choose to help him, I won't be letting you go again. Little Jade Lion King saw that she was fully committed to murdering Hansen, so he commanded his subordinates to move forward and do battle with the rest of Sacred's troops. He didn't fight, but he didn't stop Goddess directly, either. Little Jade Lion didn't want this to go any bigger than it already had, so he thought he had discovered a way in which he could quell the madness. Hansen did not care much for anything else. He flapped his wings and evaded the incoming god ring. He 
He was flying directly towards Goddess. Is that guy really Hansen? Why does he have a super Geno core? Yushin couldn't believe that was Hansen, and he thought the human looked like a god as he attacked. Yumiao looked at the battle with excitement. It doesn't matter how or why he has a super Geno core. Our chance to proceed is come. When Lion Mountain and Sacred are both injured, we can strike and claim the Godlight Tunnel for ourselves. SH asterisk T. Hansen is really that strong? He killed a high level creature of Sacred just like that. This is crazy. Tang Jin Liu was in shock at the spectacle. Queen had been forced to fight Lion Mountain's creatures alongside her companions. Her eyes looked bright. She became one of the early demigods of humanity, but she had been unlucky to end up in sacred shelter as the subordinate of creatures. Her leveling process had been extremely slow, and she had only managed to obtain a gold Geno core. Queen knew the black back dog was strong, but Han Sen had managed to kill it with one strike. It showed her that Han Sen was again the best of the best, possibly out of everything and everyone in the fourth god sanctuary. He hasn't been heard from in ten years. I didn't know he had actually come so far. Queen sighed. By using time and space in her movements, she put on the show of fighting, more than anything. She disappeared and jumped around a lot, not really engaging them. Above all, she wanted to focus on watching how Hansen battled Goddess. Goddess saw Hansen dodge the ring and come for her, but she wasn't afraid. She summoned a short sword and swung it towards him. The short sword was black, and when she swung it, it emitted a black light as if it was tearing a veil through space. Split knife? Goddess brought out her split knife. The sacred master must be very fond of her. Yumiao sounded jealous. Split knife was a famous Geno core belonging to sacred shelter. It could cut through anything, and it was said to be indestructible. When the master of split knife was still alive, it broke countless Geno cores belonging to super creatures. Its name was quite well known across all of the fourth god's sanctuary. Although Split Knife was not a Berserk Super Geno Core, its power was still better than many Berserks, anyway. If Goddess brought Split Knife here with her, Hansen is sure to die. He is so ignorant. He manages to get a little bit of power and then acts stupidly reckless. He deserves to die, really, Yuxian said dismissively. While Yuxian and Yu Miao discussed this, Hansen moved in front of Goddess. The Split Knife in her hand was being swung right at him. Little Jade Lion King was shocked. And he said, Goddess brought split knife? He is so dead. It's not like I don't want to save you. It's just that I really can't. Dong. When everyone thought Hansen was dead, they saw him raise his arm to try to block her attack. He is too naive. Not even super creatures can block that knife, everyone thought. The next second, Hansen's arm displayed a shield that looked like a black crab. It managed to successfully block the strike. Split knife's black sword light crashed into the shield but not even that was able to penetrate the defense of the arm shield. It only left a scratch that was around one inch deep. How is that possible? And what is that shield? How could it block split knife? Yu Xian screamed. The faces of those watching changed. No one had believed that split knife could be blocked. Ping. The overbearing shield displayed that word overbearing, sending the split knife's power back to its owner. Goddess wrists were broken, and her split knife was sent flying out of her hands. She coughed up blood and found herself barreling through the air, too. Although she could use Split Knife's power, her body and self Geno core weren't super yet. They could not withstand the backlash. Hansen flapped his wings and the red light arced across the sky. Taya came forward like a wild wind, and Hansen cut Goddess in half while she was still airborne. She was the favorite daughter of Sacred Shelter's leader. Even if you meow or Little Lion King possessed Hansen's power, they would never have dared to do this. Now Han Sen had just killed her mercilessly, and they all froze. Yu Miao, who wanted to take advantage of the situation, was left in shock. This was beyond all her expectations, and she didn't dare make a move. Han Sen frowned. He had killed Goddess, but he did not hear an announcement. The two halves of her body faded into the God Ring, and then the God Ring disappeared. I will kill you. The angry voice of Goddess echoed through the air. Chapter 1542, Claiming Godlight Tunnel Hansen, seeing Goddess had not died, thought that it was a great shame. Little Lion King felt relief, though. If she had really been killed, and he was involved with the incident, it might have started a war between Lion Mountain and Sacred. Although Lion Mountain was not afraid of Sacred, it'd be a clash between two super shelters. 
the loss of lives would not be worth it. Hansen noticed the split knife had not disappeared alongside Goddess, however. So, he picked it up. Super Geno Core Split Knife Obtained. Hansen was delighted. He took the knife. If it could carve a mark into the overbearing shield, it had to be a very powerful weapon. It was great for Hansen to obtain a Super Geno Core out of the endeavor. Taya was simply tough, and its effectiveness and power depended entirely on Hans Senator's split knife was incredibly strong all by itself, so for Hansen. This would definitely increase his damage output and be particularly helpful when tackling super creatures. When Goddess disappeared, the creatures of Sacred Shelter all ran off. Little Jade Lion did not ask his troops to pursue, as he did not want to make them particularly resentful. Hansen saw that Queen hadn't run off, so he walked before her and asked, You aren't under contract, are you? Novelful, Queen shook her head. If I was, even I wouldn't stay. Good. When we leave God's ruin, I'll take you back to the Alliance, Hansen said, then went back to the Little Lion. Tell your guards to protect the entrance of the Godlight Tunnel. Without my explicit permission, no one is allowed inside. Little Jade Lion swiftly agreed, then ordered his company to guard the entire valley. Little Jade Lion was a little scared of Hansen now. He had originally thought that Hansen wanted to use his power to take control of the tunnel, but it wasn't like that. Hansen had killed Goddess with a single hit, and Little Lion King was worried about upsetting him. He thought if Hansen was displeased, Little Lion King might get cut in half too. Even with a Super Geno core like Lionheart Stamp, he wouldn't feel safe. Before Hansen, even Little Lion's title didn't bring him a sense of security. Yu Miao had wanted to make a sneak attack earlier, but seeing Goddess almost die that way and have to use God Ring's power to escape, she didn't dare try anything. Little Lion King, according to our deal, we can enter the tunnel now, yes? Yu Miao said, walking into the valley to speak with Little Lion. Little Lion King gave a wry smile. If I took the tunnel, of course. But that isn't my call to make anymore. After that, Little Lion King turned to look at Han Sr. You can go into the Godlight Tunnel, but the price of admission is two gemstone Geno cores. Each, Hansen said coldly. Although Hansen wished to kill them both, they were spirits. It was ultimately pointless. Hansen just wanted them to act more careful with him. If Hansen wished to kill them, they knew he could do it in one hit. If he wanted to kill them and keep them from respawning, though, Hansen would have to destroy their spirit stones. Don't be ridiculous. Yushin spoke with an annoyed tone. The people who took the tunnel last only asked for one. Is it? Then you can pay me three, Hansen said quietly. You, Yushin sounded angry. Four. Hansen's face was emotionless throughout. He spoke even before the spirit could respond. Two then, Yumiao frowned. She was not sure if she could kill Hansen in God's ruin, so she was regretfully going to have to oblige him. Now it is four each. None less. Hansen pointed at Tangjinyo then, and said, but you can swap them out for other things, if you'd like. That being said, I'll give you 50% off if you're willing to release this man. I can give him to you, and the contract, but that means entry is free. Yu Miao looked at Tang Jin Liu as he spoke to Han Sr. To her, Tang Jin Liu was just a bronze Geno core grunt. If she could get a benefit such as that out of it, acknowledging he was important to Han Sen, she was going to bargain for the best deal possible. Yu Miao thought of using Tang Jin Liu to threaten Han Sen, but she didn't do it. She didn't know just how important weak humans like Tang Jin Liu were to Han Sen, so she was worried about being tricked. Two, if she wasn't successful in bargaining, she'd have to spend a lot of resources in gaining access to the tunnel, and Han Sen could go mad and kill them like goddess, anyway. Although they could respawn with their spirit stones, it had put an end to their relic hunt in God's ruin. Half, he doesn't deserve more, Han Sen said coldly. It was quiet for a bit and Hansen wasn't going to back off. Yu Miao agreed to the deal in the end, using Tang Jin Liu as the bargaining chip for having 50% off. For gemstone-class Geno cores was too expensive, especially if they had to pay so many for each person. Not even Yu Miao had that many. But they still had to pay two gemstone Geno cores, and that was the double the price they were going to pay before Hansen showed up. Yu Miao and Yu Xian thought Hansen would charge the others that price, too. But when the solo creatures or spirits came to ask for entry, they were allowed in for the price of one gemstone Geno core. This really peeved them. Yu Xian wished to say something and complain, but Yu Miao stopped him and just pulled him into the tunnel. Don't say anything. In God's ruin, we can't fight him. 
Once we return to the outside, though, there will be plenty of ways for us to exact our revenge. Yu Miao said darkly as she entered the godlight tunnel. I'm going to chop him into pieces. Yu Xian's eyes flared with the one of murder. Tang Liu, having gotten his freedom back, cried his eyes out. Old Han, whenever you need me, whatever you want, please, just tell me. I will have a lot to ask you, actually. When Little Flower goes to your school, you should give us a discount. Hansen laughed. No discount. We'll have him for free, and we'll give him the best treatment. Tang Liu patted his chest. Thanks, but we'll talk more about that in the Alliance. Since we're here now, though, we should head into the tunnel and try our luck. Maybe we can level up our Geno course. Hansen brought Queen and Tang Jinyo with him into the Godlight Tunnel. Godlight Tunnel was a tunnel that went through the belly of a mountain. It was around 10 miles long, and a weird power permeated the atmosphere inside. The humans felt a lot of pressure as they entered, and the deeper they went, the harder the pressure became. If a person was talented, with a good fitness level, they might learn something when they went against that strength. Their skills might be improved and perhaps level them up straight away. Chapter 1543 Leveling Up Under Pressure The tunnel had the same width as an air raid shelter. It was wide enough for a car to pass through, but that was about it. Every one mile, a beam of sunlight would bathe a portion of the tunnel from above. It made the place seem longer than it actually was, and it felt extremely weird. After each checkpoint of light, the pressure permeating the atmosphere of the tunnel increased. The gemstone class creatures that were the heirs of super creatures could only make it through 14 of those checkpoints. They were unable to go any further than that. Looking down the tunnel from a distance, the pools of light looked like the illumination of street lamps all the way down. There were 19 of them in total. Up until now, no one had been able to figure out what lay at the end of the godlight tunnel. Even the creatures that leveled up to super while inside the tunnel were unable to reach the end of it. Novel full, Little Lion King followed along and said with a smile, We met each other on the field of battle. Let's encounter one another again sometime. I am Little Jade Lion King of Lion Mountain. What is your name? Han Senator, I'm human, Hansen answered. He still wasn't fond of Little Jade Lion King, but it wasn't as if he hated the lion's guts. He wasn't entirely against having a conversation with him. As Han Sen and Little Lion King spoke, Yu Miao stared at them coldly. She despised Han Sr. And as they were having their discussion, someone else entered Godlight Tunnel. Hansen thought it was just some creature or spirit, but it was in fact six paths. Yu Miao's heart jumped when she saw six paths, six paths Emperor wouldn't hand over a Geno core. And if Hansen had any form of conflict with the spirit, she believed six paths would kill him with ease. Yu Miao, who was going to continue following, stopped where she was for a spell. She waited for six paths to catch up and see if a conflict between the two would break out. Sister, Six Paths Emperor is here. I'm not sure Hansen knows who he is. If he doesn't, given Six Paths' personality, a fight is sure to break out. Yushin told Yu Miao giddily, in hushed excitement. He was thinking along the same lines. Six Paths soon approached Hansen, and crushing the expectations set by Yu Miao and Yushin, Six Paths spoke to the human like an old friend. He asked, Why are you here? I'm in God's ruin. How could I not spare the time to visit the Godlight Tunnel? Hansen smiled. Six Paths nodded and said, Good timing, then. Now we can compete and see which of us can walk the farthest in this Godlight Tunnel. Yu Miao and Yu Xian wore strange expressions. They hadn't expected Hansen to be personally acquainted with Six Paths Emperor. And again, knowing Six Paths' personality to be what it was, it was perplexing to see him address Hansen as if he was addressing an equal. They were flat out shocked. Little Jade Lion King, seeing Hansen talk to Six Paths Emperor like his buddy, had an even greater admiration for the human. He thought to himself, it's no wonder he is so strong. To kill Goddess as he pleases, he must indeed be quite the character. Before Six Paths Emperor self-destructed, he was more famous than my father. If Hansen can talk to him like a friend, then Hansen really must be strong. Six Paths wasn't an avid talker, though, and after a few brief verbal exchanges, he went ahead and focused on getting deeper into the Godlight Tunnel. Hansen, Queen, Tang Jinliu, and Little Lion King followed. Bauer was in Hansen's arms, and Star Sea Beast was following behind Han Senator Little Silver was on the big creature's head, staring at the light up ahead. The light sources above were like small suns, and they managed to light up the tunnel rather well. 
The first curtain of light fell on Hans Sin, draping him with what felt like water. The light was tangible, but the feeling was not heavy, and it did not feel burdening. Everyone walked through the first curtain of light with ease. But after passing through the light, the gravity felt much heavier. Still, it did not slow them down or affect their passage too much. They continued walking until they reached the fifth curtain of light. There, Tang Zhenyo could not take the pressure of what came next. His entire body was wet with sweat, and it felt as if he was carrying the whole weight of a mountain. It took a lot of effort just to make one step. Of course, he only had a bronze Gino core. His fitness and Gino core level were still very weak, so it was fairly impressive he had managed to make it that far. Can you still go on? Hansen asked Tang Liu. It's okay. I can keep going. I must make it to the sixth, at least. Tang Liu gritted his teeth. Hansen didn't say anything. He just walked by Tang Liu's side. The pressure there was of no bother to Han Sr. Tang Liu could see everyone else walking forward freely, and he even saw little silver lying on Star Sea Beast's head in a relaxed posture as if there wasn't a single ounce of additional atmospheric pressure. He sighed and thought to himself, Han Sin's companions are so scary. How long will it take me to catch up to his level? Tang Liu did not want to give up, and onwards he continued. He eventually ended up far behind the others, as his pace was extremely slow. His muscles tightened, as if they were going to tear through his clothes at any given moment. Hansen didn't make it obvious that he was deliberately watching the man struggle as he was, but he did keep an eye on how he was doing. If it was becoming too much, and Tang Liu could no longer stay upright against the gravity, Hansen would take him out of the tunnel before he collapsed and died there. Surprisingly, as hard it was for him, he managed to hold on strong. And when he almost reached the sixth light, his very bones began to creak. His entire skeleton sounded as if it was going to break. Boom. When Tang Liu stepped into the wash of the sixth light, his entire body glowed with the color silver. It looked as if his Gino core had managed to reach silver class. Yu Miao and Little Lion King looked at him. Although it was not a rare thing to level up in the Godlight Tunnel, simply being able to mint he was talented. Tang Liu was tired, so he sat down and stopped moving forward. His Gino core leveled up, but his body didn't. His body could not take any more pressure, either. He couldn't walk an inch further. I can't walk. You guys go ahead and I'll wait here. Tang Liu spoke in between deep gasps. Hansa nodded as he went on alongside Queen. When they reached the ninth curtain of light, it was Queen's turn to have difficulty. And when she reached the tenth curtain of light, Queen's body began to slow and her Gino core leveled up. Godlight Tunnel gives the opportunity to level up a Gino core, but the other creatures and spirits don't show any changes. Tang Liu and Queen both leveled up. Is this just coincidental, or is there a reason for this? Hansen wondered. Chapter 1544 Why didn't they level up? After leveling up, Queen didn't walk any further. She said, My fitness isn't good enough to proceed. I won't bother trying to go any further, and I'll simply wait for you guys here. Hansen could see she was actually able to go forward a little bit more, but chose not to. Hansen really admired her character, and he imagined Queen's heavenly go must have been fiercer than ever by now. After the tenth curtain of light, some creatures showed signs of leveling up. But it seemed the chances of them leveling up were low. The ratio was around 1 in 20. The others, even if they reached a point where they could no longer go on, were unable to level up. In order to level up at those stages, you had to be below gemstone class. Those possessing gemstone self geno cores could not have their geno cores ascend to super class. After the twelfth curtain of light, most of the creatures and spirits stopped. And when they reached the thirteenth, even Yu Xin had to stop. There was only Yu Miao from Outer Sky Shelter who could keep going. Yu Miao looked at Han Sen and was shocked. She wasn't surprised Han Sen could keep going but the two creatures and the baby in his arms were also able to keep going. That was what surprised her the most. The creatures that were able to go past the 13th curtain of light were those that were the best of the gemstone tier. The fact that Han Sen's creatures could keep going was rather shocking to Yu Miao. Little Lion King was showing even more shock than her. He was able to reach this point because the way creatures leveled up was different than how humans did so. When the Geno cores of humans leveled up, it was dependent on their skills but that ascension did not greatly affect their bodies. If humans wished to level up their bodies, they had to absorb the genes of creatures. The way creatures leveled up was different from this, 
as their Geno core and physical strength were both tied to the same scale. When their Geno core leveled up, their fitness would go along with it. So, when creatures leveled up to a gemstone class fitness, that was that. There was no need for them to focus on ways that might increase their body specifically. Little Lion King's genes were strong, and his Geno core kept rising. He had come from silver to gemstone class, and through this, his body had developed as well. This was different than Queen and Tang Liu. When their Geno cores leveled up, their fitness didn't go with it. This meant they couldn't go any further. Little Lion King was satisfied with his current performance, but seeing Little Silver and Star Sea Beast travel all that way without breaking a sweat, he thought to himself, Han Sound is scary. Even his creatures are this good. I don't know if they can reach the 14th, but if they can, they are undoubtedly the greatest heirs of super creatures. Hansen didn't know this was what Yu Miao and Little Lion King were thinking about. Thus far, he just thought it was strange that Tang Jinliu and Queen had both leveled up, and he hadn't yet. Hansen had four self Geno cores. Three of them were silver, and one of them was gold. Leveling them up should have been easy, but he had reached this point and hadn't heard a peep out of any of them. Now, there was only Yu Miao, Little Lion King, Six Paths, and Hansen left. They were all deep in their own thoughts, with not a single one of them saying a word. After the 14th Curtain of Light, everyone's speed slowed down drastically. The elites there were gemstone class. Through the 14th Light and onwards, gemstone Geno cores could become super. Yu Miao's purpose for being here started now, but when she looked at the creatures around Hansen, she saw they were all able to be there just fine. She was given another shock. Are the creatures all around him heirs of super creatures? How can they reach this point with such ease? Little Lion King confirmed Hansen was powerful through this, too. If he wasn't, there was no way he could possess so many scary pet creatures. Hansen was not surprised, though. Little Silver had eaten a lot of life rops and his potential was high. He wouldn't be any weaker than a super creature. Hansen was surprised Star Sea Beast was able to come all this way, though. When Hansen saw Star Sea Beast's body, though, his Geno core was only gemstone class. Hansen thought it was just a sacred blood creature, but it didn't seem that way anymore. The way Star Sea Beast could travel through objects was unique, and it was definitely something ordinary scared blood creatures couldn't do. Now that he had walked up to this point with ease, it meant he was extremely talented. Leveling up had to be within the beast's reach. Weird. Why was the parent of Star Sea Beast only a gemstone class? Was it not little Star Sea Beast's actual parent? Hansen guessed. Star Sea Beast wasn't exerting much strength, but he was still able to keep going. Hansen was impressed. Little Silver was sitting upon its head. He hadn't walked a single step, but the pressure permeated every corner of the tunnel, so it would have still affected Little Silver. But he appeared unmoved and unchallenged. He wasn't tired at all, and it made the fox look even more powerful. Yu Miao wished to fight Hansen, but the further she went, the harder it would be. She felt as if she wasn't half as good as Han Sen's creatures. When they approached the 15th Curtain of Light, Yu Miao was having difficulty taking every next step. She ground her teeth and kept going, though. When Yu Miao hit the last bath of light, her body glowed white. Her Geno core had managed to level up. Yu Miao was exuberantly happy now, and she thought to herself, I should thank Han Sen for giving me the correct motivation. If I was alone, I don't think I would have reached this far and managed to level up. Hansen looked at Yumiao. He knew she had now reached Super because she was Gemstone previously. Little Lion King felt depressed. After leveling up twice, his body was not showing further changes. He hit the 15th light but failed to level up again, and now it felt as if he couldn't take one more step. Now I'm Super Class, so my power will be the top. I think I'm going to win. Except maybe for six paths, I will definitely be walking the furthest, Yumiao thought to herself. Little Silver and Little Star managed to go through the 15th light, but they didn't level up either. Chapter 1545 Scary Potential Little Lion King wanted to throw in the towel, but seeing Little Silver and Star Sea Beast carry on, he was reluctant to. He strove to follow. I don't believe his creatures are actually better than me. Jay Little Lion King made up his mind, he was going to march forward even further. When he was halfway to the next curtain of light, Little Lion King's body suddenly glowed. His Geno core leveled up again, giving him a super Geno core. Roar. I'm the strongest. Jade Little Lion excitedly shouted. This guy's pretty talented. He has managed to level up three times, 
so it is no wonder that he's the heir of a strong creature. Hansen was jealous. His self-geno cores had still shown no sign of changing. After Jade Little Lion became super, he felt the atmospheric pressure become lighter. And then, reaching the 15th light wasn't so much of a struggle. The strength of his body had improved, after all. He ran up to Hansen and said to him, Hansen, are you interested in competing with me? To see which of us can walk furthest? Where's the good in that? Hansen asked. If you win, I will take you as my boss and I will listen to whatever you say, no matter the command. Little Lion King rolled his eyes. He had seen Hansen's power, but he knew it was derived from the beast souls or geno cores he had collected. Little Lion King could tell Hansen's fitness was only a little bit better than a gemstone creature, and he wasn't super class. Inside the Godlight Tunnel, the extra powers Hansen relied on would be useless. You had to use your own body's power to fight back the pressure and light. And that was why the lion was now confident. Okay, then. Hansen smiled. Don't rush it, though. If you lose, I'll be your boss instead. I'll make you do everything for me, Little Lion King said quickly. Okay. Hansen nodded. Yu Miao hadn't spoken a word thus far. Little Lion King had become super, and she felt uncertain and restless. She believed Little Lion King might have actually been stronger than her now. Humans were different from creatures and spirits. If Hansen's self Geno core leveled up, his fitness would still remain what it was. Like the two humans, once Hansen reached the end of his tether, leveling up would still force him to stop where he was. Yu Miao hadn't decided to fight Hansen after becoming super because she was still afraid of his Geno cores and beast souls. It wasn't his actual power she was afraid of. Six Paths didn't say anything, either. He just continued walking, and he didn't care about anything the others were discussing. Yu Miao's surprise did not only come from Hansen alone, though. Bauer, Little Silver, and Star Sea Beast had managed to breach the 16th Curtain of Light. They only had Gemstone Geno cores, and they weren't super yet. It was extremely shocking because she had never heard of a gemstone creature making it this far before. What's that creature? And what was its parent to give it such horrible strength? Are they super creatures? But then again, if they were, they wouldn't have been allowed to enter God's ruin. Yu Miao was in shock. Little Lion King and Yu Miao were both feeling the same way. They were both in shock. White Lion King said a powerful creature's heir could go past the 16th light with a gemstone body but the likelihood of such a creature living was a one in a billion rarity. They wondered how Hansen had amassed so many. While Yu Miao and the Lion King remained dazed in their shock, Star Sea Beast began to glow. It was a beautiful thing to witness. Is Little Star leveling up? Hansen was very happy about this. This was the first super creature he had cultivated in the fourth god sanctuary. Yu Miao was already certain that Little Star was a gemstone class creature, but this confirmation only heightened her shock. A gemstone-class creature had actually reached the 16th section of the Godlight Tunnel. That meant he was the best of the best when it came to creatures. If nothing bad happened, it would undoubtedly become a berserk super-creature one day, and go on to really becoming the greatest to exist in the fourth god sanctuary. Even Six Paths was surprised by this. He saw what had occurred, and after a long stare, he said, a legend speaks of a star sea dragon king existing in the fourth god sanctuary. The star sea power it wielded was unbeatable. It reached the end of the seas and leveled up. I wonder if he is its heir? Hansen shook his head and said, No. He is just the heir of a sacred blood creature. It's just something about his genes that must have changed. He didn't know if Little Star was the heir of Star Sea Dragon King. But even if the creature wasn't he knew that, he wouldn't admit it. If that name was indeed connected to Little Star, all the enemies of Star Sea Dragon King would come looking for him. But if Little Star was indeed the heir, it helped to explain why he was so powerful. In the legends, it said Star Sea Dragon King went on to become a god. That implied Little Star was a child of a god. Everyone continued walking, and when they neared the 17th light, Little Silver looked incredibly tired. His body was shaking as he tried to beat the weight of the pressure. Hansen thought it was strange that he himself could now feel the pressure of the light, but it wasn't as bad as he thought it might be. The burden wasn't exceptionally tough for him to endure. Strange. My fitness is just a little bit better than that of a gemstone creature, just like you meow. But why can't I feel much of the godlike pressure? Hansen felt very weird. He didn't feel much of that pressure at all, and he had almost reached the 17th Curtain of Light. When they were approaching the 17th Curtain of Light, 
Little Silver stood up off of Star Sea Beast's back. The fox's fur was all standing on end, and its bones creaked and moaned. He was clearly fighting some sort of power. Hansen thought the little fox wasn't going to make it, but Starsea Beast helped and nudged it on into the curtain of light. Little Silver was barely hanging on by a thread, and unfortunately, its geno core did not evolve. Halfway through the 17th section, Little Silver could endure it no more. He had to jump off Star Sea Beast's back and stop where he was. It looked as if he had gone as far as he could. Little Silver shouldn't be any weaker than Star Sea Beast. Why did his Geno core not level up? Hansen wondered. Chapter 1546 Easy Travel In the Godlight Tunnel, there was only the superclass Yu Meow, Little Lion King, Star Sea Beast, Hansen, and six paths remaining. Bauer was in Hansen's arms. When Hansen introduced her to others, he would always say she was a pet beast soul. Pet beast souls did not possess Geno cores, so they wouldn't feel the pressure experienced in the tunnel. To others, Bauer could follow Hansen freely. And if Hansen could keep going, she too would go through all the way. Of course, Hansen knew Bauer wasn't actually a beast soul. After crossing the 17th Godlight, even Yu Miao and Little Lion King, both of whom were super, were under extreme pressure. Yu Miao and Little Lion King looked at Han Sen, and they were surprised to see him looking rather relaxed. They were shocked, and they wondered if Han Sen's fitness had actually reached the level of a super demigod. If he hadn't, they couldn't think of another reason that would explain how he had managed to come so far. It was hard to imagine a body that was not super could make it all the way here. Six Paths' face looked a little grim, too. He was feeling the weight of the pressure. Han Sen's face was still relaxed, though. The effect on him was rather minuscule. They were a hundred meters away from the 18th godlight. Yu Miao and Little Lion King's bodies began to tremble, and every step took them a lot of effort. Novelful. The two of them saw Han Sen not looking likely to quit any time soon, so they clenched their teeth and pushed on. They were so slow, though. It was as if they were dragging a mountain behind them. Their bones began to creak eventually. Little Lion King roared. He wanted to keep going, but his body was no longer allowing him to. Yu Miao was in the same situation. Seeing six paths and haunts and reach the 18th godlight, her feet finally felt as if they had been pinned to the ground. She could no longer move. I am already super class. Why is there such a big difference? Yu Miao felt terrible. She tried her hardest, wanting to walk on as Han Sen and six paths were doing. She managed to move one leg a little further but its landing was met with the sound of a catcha. The other leg had been unable to support the weight, and it ended up snapping. Ping. Yu Miao fell to the ground and looked up at Han Sen and Six Paths, who were managing to proceed even further. She couldn't get up and chase after them as she wished to. Little Lion King roared. He was able to inch his way forward a little bit more. He was shaking, and when he was only four meters away from the 18th marker, the trembling became too violent. He could no longer step forward, either. When Hansen and Six Paths passed through the 18th Godlight, the Six Paths sword began to shine like a flower. His Geno core had become super now. But Six Paths' Geno core becoming super didn't mean too much, as it had no effect on his fitness. F asterisk CK. I lost. That guy is too strong. How's he doing that? Little Lion King dropped to the floor as he watched Hansen and Six Paths go through the 18th Godlight. He gave up trying to support himself further, and he simply lay on the floor to see which of the two final contestants would win. The others did not know what Little Lion King knew, though. Han Sen's self Geno core was the same level as his own when he started, and he had already leveled up three times, whereas Hansen hadn't. If he only had a silver Geno core and his fitness was not super, it was scary to fathom how he had managed to come so far. No matter how special the human's body is, it cannot compete with Six Paths Emperor. Yu Miao remained where she was, watching the two advance. She did not want Hansen to go much further, but she didn't mind Six Paths doing much better than her. Hansen was just a human, after all, and she didn't think much of them. The mere fact he had managed to go further than she had was an excruciating fact she had trouble accepting. Maybe he cannot. But Six Paths looks fairly strained and Hansen is looking the same as ever. I think he'll end up walking further than Six Paths, Little Lion King said. He hoped Hansen could walk further. He had lost to Hansen, and he'd feel a bit better about himself if he knew Hansen was also the sort to beat someone like Six Paths. If Six Paths Emperor lost, 
The Lion King losing to Han Sen would not be so embarrassing. Since he had lost the bet, it was established that he would become Han Sen's subordinate. At the very least, he'd be the subordinate of a supreme elite. It was far better than ending up as the subordinate of a random nobody. Novelful. Creatures always obeyed the stronger, and the same applied to Jade Little Lion King. Six paths felt the pressure from the godlight, and he could feel the muscles of his emperor body tighten. He was starting to sweat profusely, too. He looked over to Han Sen, and what he saw shocked him. Han Sen looked as relaxed as the moment he first entered the tunnel. There was not a drop of sweat on him. How could this happen? His fitness isn't super yet, so how can he walk through this so easily? Six paths emperor frowned unable to formulate an answer. There were so many elites in the godlight tunnel, all possessing different elements. They had all become super class while in there. And yet, regardless of the power they possessed, it wasn't enough to withstand the pressure of the tunnel. Not even six paths believed Han Sen's power was enough to suppress the might of the godlight. But even so, he couldn't come up with a reason to explain how Han Sen was walking so freely before him. I am right. He's indeed a special opponent. I'm still looking forward to that fight. Once he levels up to Super, I will test how strong he really is. Six Paths Emperor's eyes possessed a fire. Hansen did not look back at Six Paths. The pressure of the tunnel was something he could ignore, but as he slowly reached the end, he felt as if something was there up ahead. He could sense something moving, beckoning him closer. Is there a special reason why I'm not susceptible to the pressure of the godlight? What is at the end of the tunnel? And why me? Hansen felt very confused over these events, but his curiosity had been piqued too. He really wanted to see what lay in wait at the end. Hansen quickened his pace, eager to find out what was at the end of the tunnel. Chapter 1547 The darkness seemed so far away. Hansen increased his pace, leaving six paths behind. Six paths was getting far too tired, and he slowed down. With him slowing down and Hansen speeding up, the distance between the two greatly increased. Six paths frowned. He didn't let Han Sen's progress affect him, though, and he continued at the pace he himself was most comfortable with. But when Yu Miao and Little Lion King saw the two, they were shocked. They found it all hard to believe. They were shocked that Han Sen could not only keep up with six paths, he could go further and faster. And Han Sen's pace was actually accelerating, not slowing down. They had never seen anything like this before. Witnessing someone simply reaching the 18th godlight was a supremely rare occurrence. It shocked them a lot to see Han Sen actually managing to speed up after going through it. They could not believe their eyes, and they thought it was a dream of some kind. They rubbed their eyes to double-check, and they realized they weren't wrong. Han Sen was speeding up. He had been walking, but now he was going at a steady jog. He was nearing the 19th godlight. Yu Miao and Little Lion King were too shocked to speak. Never in their wildest dreams could they picture someone jogging through the 18th portion. It's no wonder he beat me. He really is special. Little Lion King wasn't upset he had lost the bet. He felt as if it was within expectations that he had lost to Han Senator Truth Be Told. He was actually a little glad. Yu Miao did not say anything. Her lips only trembled as she stared at Han Sen in the distance, who was still jogging. How is this possible? He is just a human. Just a human. Yu Miao's mood was a complicated one. And not long after, Hansen breached the 19th curtain of light. His speed did not slow down. He was getting quicker, going at the pace of a kid that was racing home after school. Six Paths was still walking forward slowly, and he struggled with each step he took. Still, despite the struggle, he too managed to reach the 19th godlight. He had simply gone slower than Hans Sr. Six Paths looked determined. He continued at his own speed and although his clothes were soaked with sweat, they weren't stopping him. Now Six Paths was like a sword, a fearless sword. It did not matter what trouble or hardship lay ahead, nothing would make him quit his arduous struggle to proceed. But when Six Paths passed through the 19th Godlight, Hansen's body suddenly disappeared at the end of the tunnel. The Godlight tunnel had 19 Godlights that illuminated the entirety of the tunnel. Strangely, though, the far end was dark. No one knew what lay behind that curtain of black because no one had entered before. Now that Hansen had gone inside with ease, it made Six Paths' eyes shine with zeal. Hansen being there made him want to go and reach the end with a greater vigor. He reached the end of the tunnel. They expected this would happen, but Yu Miao was still extremely shocked to see Hansen reach the end and disappear into the darkness there. 
She did not know how many years God's ruin had existed and how many creatures had become super there. Many super creatures and spirits that emerged from that place went on to become leaders elsewhere in the sanctuary. Some of them went on to be emperors or even berserk super creatures. Even so, none of those had ever reached the end of the tunnel before. The 18th God Light was the farthest a demigod had ever reached. Not many people could approach the 19th God Light. Those that could were similar to six paths. But no matter how good they were or how talented they were, none could reach the end. Hansen was just a human, and he had almost reached the end. And what's more, he hadn't struggled. He had freely run there. Yumiao would claim such a story to be preposterous, had she not seen it with her own two eyes. She knew if she told the story to other spirits, they would not believe her. What kind of person is he? Can humans truly accomplish such a feat? Yu Miao's head was totally messed up. It's no wonder he became my boss. He is strong. He is too strong. This has never happened before. Little Lion King's eyes were open wide. He did not think it was a shame to make Hansen his boss. And he even found himself referring to him as boss already. He was now trying to think of what benefits he might reap, having come into the service of Han Sr. Six paths was like an indestructible sword, approaching the end. Each step was solid, as if nothing in the universe could halt his advance. One step. Two steps. Three steps. Six paths was getting close to the finish line. He was close to the darkness at the tunnel's end, and that was all he could see now. When Little Lion King and Yu Miao calmed down a bit, they then turned their attention to Six Paths. They wanted to see if Six Paths could also reach the end of the Godlight Tunnel. Six Paths was getting closer and closer to that darkness, but he was slowing down. Each step was slower than the next due to the increasing difficulty. The powerful Godlight was something not even Six Paths could shirk. The weight was really starting to pile up. Catcha. The tunnel's floor had been shining with the godlight for who knew how long. It was believed to be indestructible, but it was cracking beneath Six Paths' feet. Every step, he took left a crater-like footprint in the stone below. Six Paths was less than a hundred meters away from the 19th godlight, and aside from Han Sen, no one had ever come this far before. But Six Paths wanted more than this. He wanted to reach the black, just like Hansen had. Little Lion King and Yu Miao stared at Six Paths. It was not as if they were the ones there, but they were excited to watch, all the same. One step. Two steps. Three steps. Six Paths body felt sharper and sharper, and he no longer felt like a person. He felt as if he was a walking sword. Almost there. Only ten meters to go. Yu Miao clenched her fists in anticipation. The blood inside Six Paths' body began to seep out of his skin, making him look like a red sword. Every step six paths took made him bleed more profusely. Hold on. Just a few steps left to go. Yumiao wanted six paths to reach the end, as that would make her feel better. Six paths was wholly dyed red. He was incredibly slow, but he was directly before the darkness. The light and the dark painted two worlds side by side. Six paths was standing in front of the black wall that separated the two. He couldn't see anything yet, but he still had to take one last step before entering. But Six Paths just stood where he was, unable to make the last step. Get in. Yu Miao shouted out in her heart. Six Paths' heart was screaming, too. The scary sword light was encompassing his entire body. But if he took one more step into the darkness, he was afraid he would shatter. The horrible god light suppressed his entire body. And no matter how much more power he wished to unleash, his legs remained pinned on the ground. He couldn't walk anymore. Six Paths wished to know what lay beyond the darkness but he was unable to move his body. He could no longer even wriggle his fingers. He was only one step away, but the darkness seemed so far away. Chapter 1548 A Room Hansen was standing in a room. He looked at it in strange awe, with his mouth hanging wide open. The area looked like it would very dark as he came into it from the godlight tunnel, but when he breached the black veil, it really was like nothing more than a thin curtain obscuring the view. Through the darkness, there was a room that looked like a lounge of sorts. Hansen wouldn't have been surprised if he encountered a monster in that room. Hansen was prepared to fight when he entered, but he found himself shocked and speechless instead. There was a table, chairs, cups, and benches. They were composed of a crystal-like material Hansen was familiar with. They looked like what Hansen had seen inside the main control room. The chairs and table were of a similar design, too. Hansen confirmed the room had been built from crystal, 
and it was therefore likely it had been built by the crystallizers. Why is there a crystallizer room beyond the godlight tunnel? Hansen's brain was full of question marks. Novel full. According to crystallizer technology, it should have been impossible for such stuff to exist in the sanctuaries. After all, Hansen couldn't even use his beetle in the sanctuary. But there was an entire crystallizer room here in front of him, nonetheless. It's just a room. Maybe someone moved it here? But this is the end of the godlight tunnel, and who could possibly possess the ability to move an entire crystallizer room here? Hansen looked around, hoping he'd find a solution. He was also looking out for that which was the crux of his worry. He looked around the room a few times, but he couldn't find anything. The things around him were just ordinary objects. Hansen tried the chair out, and he was able to confirm it was the same sort he found in the main control room. Even though it looked crystal and hard, it was soft and plush. He now thought it was a great shame he couldn't use the beetle in the sanctuary. If he had been able to, he'd have liked to ask it for information concerning this place. Hansen's vision then became fixed on something on the left side of the room. There was a black crystal drawer standing against a wall. Hansen walked up to it and pulled the drawer open, hoping to find some information. But he was unable to pull it out. He tried it twice and found that there was no leeway. It had to have been locked. Hansen decided to draw Taya and beat the drawer instead. There were some sparks, but the attack didn't leave a mark on the surface. Hansen's face changed. He used all the power he could muster, and yet, it hadn't left a single mark. The crystal was unfathomably strong. When Hansen frowned, thinking about how he might open it, the beetle in his hand now began to shine. Hansen had been unable to use it in the sanctuary before, but now it had come to life. Control room discovered. Would you like to connect? The beetle's AI voice rang from Hansen's hand. Connect, Hansen said, with surprise. This really was a form of main control room, where crystallized technology such as the beetle could be used. It certainly exceeded Hansen's expectations. Through his entire life, he had been told he could not make use of proper technology when he was in the sanctuary. Many people had even tested this theory in the sanctuary, too. The results were all the same. From lighters to advanced cannonballs and super warframes, nothing could be activated inside the sanctuary. They might as well have been hunks of steel. And crystallizer technology, such as the beetle, couldn't be used, either. Hansen wasn't sure why that had now changed all of a sudden. Novelful, establishing connection to control room. The symbols on the beetle shone, and it moved to land on the black crystal drawer. Then, Hansen heard a catcha. The door that was shut opened up. Connection successful. The beetle's light dimmed after the drawer opened. Hansen looked over the drawer, and inside, he saw a glowing crystal-like machine. It was like some sort of control platform, and the lights looked like streaming data. Hansen wasn't too sure what he was looking at. What is this? Hansen asked the beetle. The beetle responded with its mechanical voice, and it answered, It's a computer. What is it for? Hansen asked. I don't have enough data to formulate a certifiably correct response. Therefore, I cannot answer you. The beetle was shining as it delivered its dialogue. Hansen frowned. He didn't understand much about crystallized technology, and he was unable to operate it since he didn't know what it was supposed to do. As Hansen mulled what he should do, a door opened on the other side of the room. Hansen went over to take a look with much curiosity. It looked as if the next room was a bedroom. There was a comfy-looking crystal bed at its center. The bed still had sheets on it, and the corner looked as if it had been tossed aside. It looked rather messy, as if the owner of the bed had once left in a rush without time to tidy. Hansen went over to observe the blanket, but he saw nothing under it. He then looked at the nightstand. There was a crystal bottle there, containing a red liquid. It was a touch lighter than red wine, appearing pinkish more than anything. The bottle had a lid on it. Hansen pulled it off and his nose was greeted with the pleasing sensation of an alcoholic beverage. Is this the alcohol crystallizes drank? Hansen found that rather amazing. Hansen put the lid back on and decided to keep the bottle. He opened the drawers of the nightstand next, to see if he could find something more useful. When Hansen opened the drawer, he grinned. There were many items inside. It looked as if there were hair clippers and various decorative oddities. There was a bottle, too, which might have contained a woman's makeup product. Amidst all those items, Hansen also caught a glimpse of a diary. He took it out of the drawer and opened it. There were many words inside, and the text looked to be composed by the gorgeous handwriting of a woman. 
What excited Hansen the most was the fact it was a language of ancient humanity. It was something he could read. Hansen was glad he had learned so many ancient languages now. If he hadn't, he wouldn't have been able to read a single word the diary contained. Chapter 1549, Diary Hansen was very eager to read the contents of the diary. Although it was a diary, the entries weren't dated. And furthermore, each page only contained a sentence or two. The entries were not a continuous thing, either. It was a casual, random recording of stuff. 3480, why is he so dumb? I can't believe he got killed by a jade bone beast. Has 5079's brain filled up with water? With his power, he might as well have a death wish by going to the galaxy sea. He died. What a dumb asterisk SS. The diary was full to the brim of complaints, but Hansen wasn't sure what the numbers meant. Are the crystallizes practically the same as humans? Were they in the sanctuary to hunt creatures? Are the numbers the names of their friends? Hansen thought to himself. There were many complaints, but Hansen made sure to read every single word. He didn't want to accidentally skip over an important detail and lose a potential lead. Ultimately, the results were disappointing. Hansen had managed to read half of it, but the content up until then had been unchanging. It was like the person who had been writing the diary was a very bored recorder. It sounded as if they watched people fight all day. Hansen managed to hold back the urge of skipping to the last page, though, and he went through the diary page by page. After going through a bunch more, however, his eyes finally came across some text that roused him back to full consciousness. 44 days to go before returning. There is still no one who is qualified. It looks like the mission has failed. Returning? What does returning mean? And qualified for what? What does that mean? Hansen was confused. He kept on reading, hoping to find an answer. But right after, it led back to more typical complaints. Hansen read through another dozen pages, though, and he came across something else that stood out. Mission failed. Unable to track number four. We can finally get out of here. There is no longer a need for us to suffer in this place anymore. After that page, the diary was empty, and it looked like the owner of the diary left and no longer felt the urge to write inside it. Hansen's heart jumped, and so he flicked back through the pages. He remembered seeing the writer complain about a number four earlier, but at the time, he might not have noticed it. When the diary owner left, they mentioned number four. To be featured on the final page, number four had to be a person of some importance. Hansen then gathered all the complaints and entries he could find that made mention of number four. Number four is not bad. Her sword is good. She has reached kindergarten level. Number four wants to kill Blood River God. She must have a death wish. D asterisk M in. Number four did it. That was some dogsh asterisk T lock. After Hansen read them all, he noticed that the author really had paid attention to number four. The diary's owner, when complaining about the others, did so differently. It was as if she was an absolute superior, and her comments were written like the observation notes on monkeys in a zoo. Even though the diary's owner seemed to complain about number four the most, it was different. It felt like they shared something, and that number four wasn't regarded as a lower ear being. After Hansen read all the complaints, he came to a few conclusions. Number four was a female. He did not know if she was a crystallizer or what, but she was a female. She used a sword and she was very strong. There was one mention of cruel chi, and he had heard of its existence as a demigod super creature. Normal super creatures wouldn't dare provoke that beast. The complaint said number four managed to kill the monster. Although the diary said her sword skills were not great, like that of a little kid, the progression seemed smooth. Number four must have been able to kill the creature with ease. And there was a point in which she was mentioned to be beautiful. One of the complaints stated, why is being pretty something to be proud about? Being pretty can often lead to arrogance. D asterisk M in number four. Hansen connected a few more of the complaints to paint a clearer picture. He learned a baby creature managed to approach number four and follow her. That was why the diary had a line that read like that. Hansen's ultimate conclusion was that number four was pretty. She had great sword skills and could slay super creatures. Hansen combined all those clues and threads, and eventually, he had a clear idea of who she was in his mind. Gu Chi Cheng. Could that really be her? That seemed a little impossible, as Hansen figured that he could probably make a rough guess about the book's age. And it was a crystallizer thing, written by and about those of their own kind. 
And it wasn't as if Gu Qingqing was the only woman who was pretty and wielded a sword. There were many spirits and humanoid creatures like that, too. Hansen read a bit more of the included content, and aside from number four, there were no other special things. The other numbers did not seem to be half as important. There were usually single mentions, and after a complaint, they were never mentioned again. I need to ask Gu Qi Ching if she was the one who killed Cruel Qi depending on her answer. I'll be able to find out if this was really her. Hansen thought the possibility of this was low, but he still wanted to go back and ask. Hansen poked around the bedroom some more, and aside from a few various oddities and bottles, there was nothing else to investigate. The beetle was silent the whole time, too. Aside from those two rooms, there was no other way out, either. There was nothing worth taking, so he exited by the way in which he entered. The items, bottles, and the diary were all placed inside the cruel bottle by Hans Sr. When Hansen exited the room, however, he was given a shock. Six Paths was standing right outside like a blood man. Hansen almost didn't recognize him. Crash. When Six Paths saw Hansen, his body collapsed. He spilled blood as he tumbled backwards. Hansen immediately went to pick him up. He placed him on his back and thought to himself, Why were you so stubborn? This was just a path. It does not determine your future. Hansen forgot about the fact he was the only one who had walked to the end. The answers for what he was looking for would not affect him, but he'd continue looking. Little Lion King and Yu Miao saw Hansen carrying the unconscious six paths, and their faces looked strange. Boss, you are so strong. Even six paths could not reach the end, but you did, Jade Little Lion said. Chapter 1550, Big Iron Chimenea Hansen brought six paths out of the godlight tunnel. He examined his wounds and noticed he had been injured badly. Fortunately, the body of an emperor was strong and his life was not in any danger. You meowed at Yushin with her and left. She stared at Hansen the whole time, and her look could be best described as complicated. Right now, however, Hansen did not have the time to kill them. And even if he did, he realized it would be pointless. If he ever hoped to kill them, he'd have to do it so they'd never come back, in a one and done fashion. Jade Little Lion was already showing extreme loyalty to Han's senator, he kept on calling him boss, casually, as if he had been born to serve him. Ever since he met Cheap Sheep, he didn't like being called a boss, so he wanted his subordinates to refer to him as chairman, as others often did. Hansen, should we leave now? Little Fairy was in a rush to ask Han Sr. Little Fairy did not enter the Godlight Tunnel because, according to her, she wanted to level up to Super entirely by herself and she hadn't come to God's ruin for the tunnel, either. It was all about the relic. Leveling up for the tunnel offered different benefits. It was difficult to determine which was better, and people were always of a different mind in choosing which was the best. Hansen brought Bauer and the others with him. Jade Little Lion wished to follow, and so Hansen did not decline. Having a super creature like that by his side could also prove beneficial. Jade Little Lion told the other creatures to remain by the tunnel and protect the place. Then, he followed after Hansen to visit another place in God's Ruin. Hansen rode atop Star Sea Beast's back and sometimes brought out an item or two to play with. They were the things he brought with him from the Crystallize bedroom. Before he entered the Godlight Tunnel earlier, he felt as if something was beckoning him. He lost that sensation when he entered the tunnel. And he no longer felt it after coming back out, so Hansen thought the item that had pulled his attention had to be one of the items he had brought with him. But when Hansen looked at the items, they all looked like women's things. There was nothing particularly special about them. It's those black seahorses again, little fairy shouted, from her position up front. Hansen looked to the sky. The seahorses were pulling a big chimenea, as they always did. But this time, Hansen was surprised. The flames of the object were extinguished. Those black seahorses keep pulling that black chimenea around the ruin constantly. I wonder what they want. Hansen was just talking to himself. Jade Little Lion quickly said, My father came to this ruin himself when he was a cub. And he saw the black seahorses with a chimenea back then, too. He told me not to get too close to them, because each one is as strong as a super demigod creature. Of course we know they are strong. Little Fairy lifted her lips. Hansen looked at Jade Little Lion with surprise and said, Wasn't White Lion King a born berserk super creature? Many people believe he was but that's not actually true. He leveled up to achieve the strength he possesses. While speaking about White Lion King, Jade Little Lion looked proud. 
Hansen nodded and did not say anything. He looked at the black seahorses pulling the big chiminia. The black seahorses eventually slid down the side of a mountain and disappeared from sight. A period of time passed and they had yet to reemerge. Let's go see what they are doing. Hansen was quite interested in the chiminia. The big chiminia was too cold to approach normally, but its blue fire had now subsided. If he managed to get close enough, he might be able to catch a glimpse of what was inside. Little Fairy thought the chiminia was the relic, so she agreed they should go and take a look. Jade Little Lion looked hesitant, but if Hansen was going, he knew he'd have to go with him. The party then went towards where the chiminia had set down. The mountain wasn't the biggest in the ruin, but it was still around 10,000 meters high. Fortunately, there were none of those strange flowers to be wary about. They all climbed to the peak with ease, free of any danger. When they reached the peak, they noticed that behind the mountain was another mountain and peak to climb. This mountain went up into the clouds. They could actually see the black seahorses pulling the chiminia up the slopes. Hansen and Little Fairy looked at each other, and then they followed after them. The peak was just like a normal glacier poking its head above the clouds. They couldn't see the black seahorses once they got there, though. They spent half the day climbing into the clouds, and what they saw was quite surprising once they got through. It was a sea of clouds. There were so many clouds all about, it was like an idyllic view of heaven. Another peak poked its head from out of that cloudy ocean, too. And then, there was a giant icy ship floating in the air. The black seahorses pulled the chiminia up to the highest peak, then stopped. It was like they were waiting for something. Catcha. Catcha. Not long after, the chains of the seahorses were opened. The eleven of them shouted happily, bobbed quickly down the hill, and then leaped down into the clouds. They were like fish having just escaped a net. They swam very happily in the sea of clouds. Not long after, a group of ice seahorses approached. They were the first type of seahorses that Hans Sin's group had caught a glimpse of back in the frozen forest. The eleven of black seahorses bobbed over to them, obviously keen to meet with the ice seahorses. The bigger seahorses crossed their necks with the necks of the other seahorses, like old couples. The smaller ice seahorses were around them, all swimming happily. They were like one big, happy family. When Hansen saw them meet that way, Bauer looked over at the chiminia with curiosity. She jumped out of Hansen's arms and ran over to the peak it was sitting upon. Hansen was shocked. He wished to call her back, but he didn't want to spook and possibly alert the black seahorses. Hansen was curious about the big chiminia, so he followed Bauer to that same peak. Little Fairy and Jade Little Lion also followed from behind. They all snuck up the peak from the other side. The black seahorses were tying up their necks with the necks of the other seahorses, and as a result, they were unable to spot them. The big chiminia was not lit, and it wasn't emitting any frosty air. Everyone went over to the peak, and Bauer leaped atop the chiminia. Then, she stuffed her head inside the chimney. She looked around with great curiosity. Hansen was now right behind her, so he picked Bauer up. He pulled her off the chiminia and then put his own head near the exhaust. He wanted to get a look inside the chiminia, too.